Hey, everybody. Before we start the show today, I want to let you guys know about our friends over at studiosweden.com. That's S-U-D-I-O Sweden.com. They're a headphone company, and they sent us some headphones to check out. And as a thank you, I want to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, I got them in the mail. They're really nice. They're really stylish. They're wireless headphones, which I'm an iPhone user. And if you're an iPhone user, they did away with the auxiliary cord. You guys are going to need some wireless headphones, and Studio Sweden has you covered. They have three different types of wireless headphones. They've got the earbuds, which I got and Ryan got. They also have some over-the-ear headphones, which I really, really, really want to check out. And they're cool. They're really cool. They have a lot of different options. If you are an auxiliary cord headphone lover, they have you covered there as well. And everybody's got their favorite pair, right? I have my favorite pair of headphones. You're probably listening to this on your favorite pair of headphones, but you always need backups. So why not check out studiosweden.com? We're also going to give you guys a little bit of a discount code. They've been nice enough to provide us one. Use the promo code SIGHT and SOUND15 for 15% off. Again, that's SIGHT and SOUND15, all one word, for 15% off your purchase at studiosweden.com. Again, that's S-U-D-I-O, Sweden.com. Get your headphone game on. And we still have to podcast. It's ridiculous. It's uh, so just to give everybody a framework of how today has been. It's Friday when we're recording this much earlier than we typically podcast. This is a much different show. But because of you. Because of me and you. I left, left tomorrow wide open. But you have to work. Yeah. So it is what it is. But regardless, uh, got off work. Came home, did a great episode of Sight and Sound Music. You guys will have heard it by now, hopefully. Uh, went a little bit long. Ryan shows up. How you doing? Participates on the music show. How, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time on the music show? Yeah, it's good. It's good. pretty good. He's taking a vape. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to go to me so quickly. Yeah, it was pretty good. I don't get to talk about music. Did it inspire you to do a movie show? And by I don't get to talk about music, I... I mean, uh, you could talk about music every week here. If I was going to say it's on. <laughs> there's always a music segment, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> on this show. We're going to do it again today on this episode because, you know, we still have to podcast. I think I think you're going to have a lot to say during my music segment. But no. So <laughs> you, you you had put it. You fucked up royally. You don't even realize it. But you I did not. You texted me and asked me if I wanted ramen. There's actually a story about ramen before. You even texted me that. So earlier this week, uh, in case Mark Fernandez is listening to this as well, I take in oh, a lot you know of he is. take in a lot of complex content. And first we feast is one of my favorite channels on YouTube. It is Complex's food channel, and um, they did a little special on brothless ramen the other day. It was a minute and a half video. Watched it. <laughs> thought about thought about ramen all day. In fact, it was already on the in the cards to go and eat ramen today. But you texted me and said, can we eat ramen? I wanted to go eat ramen. I thought we were going to go to the, what's the place you took me to that's over by the Panda Express, that word you got, fa and boba tea. I think it's called Fo Saigon. What, what country is the food from? Vietnamese. Vietnamese, thank yeah. you. I, th- I always had it in my head that we were going to that place because I thought that's what, I thought you had ramen when we went there. So right. in my mind, it was, we'll go to the Vietnam place. And the Vietnam place. We'll go check out uh, this whole Vietnam thing, see what the big deal Vietnamese. is. Vietnamese. I'm making a joke. Okay. Ramen is Japanese, by the way. So I thought we were going to go to that place. and it, We'd be in, we'd be out, and we'd come back, and we'd podcast. and uh, We were on a good schedule. It was a, Yeah, it was an okay schedule, and... It just went to shit. Um, the first thing that went wrong was I decided to stop in Kayla's shop and say hi. Yeah, you know, because Jay has a girlfriend. 
We had to stop by and say hi. We had to include her in our plans. Look, just because should, we don't have a speak badly, they're my mother and father, Jay and Kayla. Just because uh, we don't have a large female demographic that listens to the show doesn't mean that you can just speak so uh, disrespectfully towards women. When are you going to put out your? I think I like. I mean, I think I like Kristen and Christina more than anybody. <laughs> Oh, more than anybody? Yeah. I can actually support that claim myself. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> All you fuckers need to step up. Take that, Brad Bill. <laughs> Take that, Matt White. Actually, he's a pretty nice guy. Yeah, they're all nice, aren't they? But regardless, <laughs> so we showed up and uh, just hung out for a little bit, waited for her to get done, and decided to go to school, which is the name of a... Japanese sushi place, uh, just a Japanese restaurant, I guess, in general. <laughs> that uh, down the road potato from her. skins. Or Is they're not like, skins, they're like but steak wedges. Fries. They're like wedges, yeah. yeah. Were we a steakhouse? There was a, they also had the seaweed salad. But okay, yeah. maybe that follows that pretty makes normal. It, that yeah. makes it. <laughs> so um They had a seaweed salad. <laughs> regardless, we uh we order our food and we sit there. For two hours. Two hours later. And uh, we didn't sit there for two hours. It took about an hour to get our food, right? Hey, hey, school. Hey, look at me. School? I'm already looking at you. Should be ashamed of themselves. Can we stop that? You took that from me. I didn't take anything. Yes, you did. It's you ca- copied. It's carrying on a bit. But I took it from somewhere else. And then I stopped saying it on purpose, and then you kept doing it. You don't even you don't even do it cor- properly. It's just a thing. You don't even do it properly. You don't have the same cadence, the pitch. You don't even know what I'm doing with it. I'm just trying to flowers. <laughs> anyway, school. I mean, frankly, I, I what what has school ever done? Okay, what have they ever done? Oh. Big school, the big restaurant on campus, please. What's a Give school, me a break. What's the school of fish? Give me a break, please. I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves. I think if you're going to make your patrons wait for two hours just for some hot soup, I mean, get out of here. You don't You don't belong. You actually thought it was pretty good, though, didn't you? It's delicious soup. I mean, it's fantastic. It was actually really good. It was great soup. They had, a, they had a cooked egg in it. They had some, what was that, bacon? Well, that's just par for the course for ramen. Can also say, you, I mean, usually ramen is a brick in some water that I microwave. Can also just say this Bath too: bomb. you also requested that we go eat ramen, and in your mind you wanted pho. And the funny thing about that is, when you said that, I was like, "Well, I wanted ramen, and we ate pho last time." So you were confused about the. Were you pulling some racist food stuff there? What did I ask? I I made a joke at the table and asked if it was racist. And none of you acknowledged the joke. I can't remember what it was. You were yelling I, about Asian people. <laughs> no, that was a different thing. <laughs> hey, hey, one other thing. A lot of white people working in that place. There was a lot, a of, white lot pe- of white there people. There was a lot of white people. I have a rule. I think that was part of the problem is that the white people were in charge of making this Asian food. Hey, I have a rule, okay? When I go to a Mexican restaurant, I don't want one gringo there when i go to a mexican restaurant and there are too many white people no sir where am i taco bell where am i tumbleweed no sir where are my chi chis you remember chi chis fuck yeah i remember chi chis <laughs> where am i where am i chilies <laughs> chi chis where are my buffalo wild wings where you can get a case of you know what i'm fine with i'm fine with a gringo Bringing out the chips and salsa, because it because they even want me around there. Because even know, it's, in that it's sense, shame, it's like that white person works you, for these authentic Mexicans. You know what's a shame though? I'll tell you what's a shame. The Mexican restaurant that I frequent quite a bit, not Taco Place, but the other Mexican restaurant around my house, is we it go as good as my bit. Mexican place? Hey guys, you all Mexicans working there, or just Hispanic people in general? Sorry, I don't mean to. Yeah, don't mean to generalize, but regardless, Mexican food, but your salsa. Kind of tastes like cocktail sauce. I'm just going to throw it out there. What's up with that? I have never had a better Mexican 
restaurant than the one that I go to. Oh, my everybody's regular got their own Mexican every, every time I go anywhere else, and in my hometown has, I think we discovered a sixth or seventh Mexican restaurant. There's a lot. You have like three within one block of each other. It's a much smaller place. Yes. And like, we have to just say one thing, and please tell me if you disagree with this. We say Mexican restaurant, and we do have to distinguish between Mexican restaurants and taco place, because taco place is not really a... I mean, it's obviously a Mexican restaurant, but it's not... It's, it's taco for place. tacos. It's taco place. Even though there's some other things on the menu. Yeah, but it's taco place. But I spoke Menudo. to my chiropractor, who's also from your hometown, and she and has also... no idea what it is. She also referred to it as the taco place. Yeah, 100%. It has a difficult name to spell. Uh-huh. So, uh... Where were we going with that? What I wanted to say, if you go to any Chinese buffet where I live, they're all <laughs> they're all Latino. We went, speaking of eating. They're all Latino at the Chinese buffet. We this is our second meal together this week. We went to Hibachi earlier. Hey, felt felt awful after we left. Do you think that guy's listening to our show? The I don't guy know. we had let's, dinner with? Let's get into it, but real quick. <laughs> <laughs> felt terrible after we left. And then Two hours later, I was hungry again. What's up with that? What's up with the GMOs or whatever they're called? What's it called? H- uh, HTCs? M- MSG? MSGs. Madison Square Gardens. Why Why? Why do you get hungry Welcome after to the you, garden. Why do you get Run hungry after you eat Asian food? Um, I don't know. And hey, why was my bill? $60. Because hibachi for two is forty dollars. That's ridiculous. And then you had two beers on top of that, right? And two, then you had uh, one beer sushi for me, one on beer top for of Kayla. that. Yeah, it added up. Hibachi. I mean, my plate was twenty. Yeah, it added up. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting meal. Yeah, we got to we talked to somebody. Uh, the person to our right, we talked about vitamin B, can, and then to a person to our left, we talked about Game of Thrones. Can I talk to you about that interaction? Real vitamin quick. B? No, just in general. The whole thing sitting there. You hated it. I'm just well, let me say that you know, we've talked many times about how I feel about just interacting with people. Mm. Did it shock you that I was so forthcoming with those conversations? No, I thought I was feeling great. I don't care. I mean, he he might be listening to this or not. I have no idea. But the what guy was his name? I don't remember. Pervy. Oh, Mr. His uh YouTube channel, his YouTube account was Mr. Pervs. There you go. And I don't remember his first name. Hey, man, name. let's work on that name, all right? But uh, if he uh, – I, I don't know if he's listening to this or not, but this is the truth. I, I th- No, I thought he was a great guy. And nice I, guy. Super I enjoyed nice guy. it. I enjoyed Very talking to him. Very knowledgeable of the Game of Thrones. I love to I – I mean, I can make fun of anything. I can make a joke about anything. Make you feel confident? I, I, don't need, I don't need to make a joke about that because I that was a genuine good time, great conversation. We had, uh, I had fun talking about Game of Thrones with him. But the guy to our right is the joke where he was like – <laughs> he overheard us talking about our uh taking vitamins. So, oh, you guys take vitamin B? <laughs> what guy? You're going to ask us about vitamin B? Oh, big gulp, huh? <laughs> All right, see you later. If you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking, what do you take vitamin B for? Does anybody what? know? Does what? anybody actually know? Like feel better? <laughs> the answer to your question, guy, is just what does vitamin B do? Right. Like, you, don't you know that already? Oh, speaking of vitamin B. Whatever vitamin B does, that's what we take it for. Can I tell you a side <laughs> vitamin B story? Oh, vitamin B. So my, my mom, my family in general, very knowledgeable about medicine because a lot of them have worked in the health industry for a long time. I mean, they're crazy. Like, you can just ask them, like, I have a scratchy throat. And they're like, well, does your hair hurt? Oh, well, you need this specific thing. <laughs> and then... Oh, does your hair hurt? And then, uh, so I tell my mom, hey, I don't know why this Did you tell her I thought I had tetanus? No. I, I text her. I said, hey, just so you know, I'm taking B12 now. And her th- her thing was immediately to say, well, you need to be careful how much you take because of this, this, and this. Why? You sh- I don't. It doesn't matter. And then she immediately said, you should be taking an no, I'm asking because well, I, I take B12. I, I, just listen. So she was like, you need to be taking something, something B, like a all B or complete B or whatever it's called. B-complex. Yeah. And uh, regardless, the entire tone of the conversation 
was that it was because I had done it without talking to her first and she wasn't quite sure why I would, I, I don't do things like this. I don't take, I just don't take vitamins. I don't randomly like, you know what? I'm going to take vitamins. It was very out of character for her baby boy just to do something like this. So she was skeptical. You should see how many. I've seen. No, you haven't. I have them in two places. I have them all spread out. You have no yeah. idea the amount of supplements. Take like a cancer that I have. patient. You have no idea the amount of supplements I have in my house. Take like a cocktail of vitamins. It's a do lot. You do, I do the gummies, and they're quite delicious. I don't like multivitamins because I think they just they just sit in your stomach. I, I mean, have a multivitamin. I've had I've had Never friends. What brand is it? I have no idea. I'll show you a break. Uh, I had a friend of mine who got some stomach, uh, w- like x-rays done or scans done. And in the scan, the doctor could just see that whatever multivitamin he was taking was just sitting in there. And the doctor was just like, yeah, this isn't doing anything. So I, I like the gummies. I mean, I'm not saying the gummies do that. I think what he was taking was like a Centrum Silver or something like that. I mean, the gummies are just good. They just taste good. You want one? You want a B12 at break? Prefer a Flintstone vitamin. Oh, really? Yeah, you like that? No, I, anyways, I, I don't take any. Of that. <laughs> I don't take that. Just to wrap up the hibachi conversation, one of my favorite parts of that interaction. I don't know if you remember this or not. So the guy, the chef that cooks the hibachi, comes over and says, "Hey, how you doing?" And if, he, you know, he's he's Asian of some sort, and uh, he's cooking, doing his well, thing. He'd be Japanese. And then the what? Well, okay, uh, and. In that, it might have been Latino. In that interaction, the guy that asked the vitamin question said, "Hey, uh, oh. can, can I can I get mine a little like?" Ri-? And the, oh. it was clear that this the chef knew no English besides like, "Hey, hey, how are you?" Oh. And and it was just the most awkward oh. interaction. The chef had to call for the waitress, who was a white American. Oh, and. Uh, it was just the weirdest interaction. The guy was like, yeah, can you make sure that you just leave a little pink inside the steak? And the waiter would say something back to him that clearly wasn't what the guy wanted. Right. So the guy kept having to say, yeah, the the, the pink and the steak. He was respectful about it. And oh, yeah, he yeah, just yeah, wasn't yeah. really it wasn't, putting two yeah, and two it wasn't, it wasn't racist or anything. Yeah. It wasn't. There was sometimes you can thing. get. Sometimes oh, you yeah, can yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you can understand me? Especially where we live, yeah. Um, I want to paint. So anyway, pink and the stink. There was that back and forth, and then the the chef had to call the what, like you said, and it was the waitress. Oh my god, I can't believe we didn't make eye contact during that whole thing. I just put my head down. I felt sorry for <laughs> everyone involved. I should have just <laughs> put my hand on the guy's shoulder and be like, just stop. Yeah, can we get an app to order this and just pick you know it up why? like we do at Starbucks? You know why? Because no matter what, that guy can eat that fucking steak. Well, yeah, I think he had settled on <laughs> he, that too. At he one point, ordered he was just like, a medium. Right. He ordered a medium steak and then clarified, "Will you make sure you leave some pink in the middle, guy? I'm sure it's fine." <laughs> you ordered a medium. At one point, he just sort of took his things and went home. He was like, "All right, we're good with whatever happens." But yeah, shout out to the Hibachi Grill. Shout out to Mr. Pervs. Shout out to Mr. Pervs. Shout out to school. Uh, you've made our interactions in our day. And just so I can, just so I can close this out. This is the second podcast I'm doing today, um, and I'm very happy. I'm very proud. If you didn't hear on Sight and Sound Music, I bought a new flannel and I bought it from a grocery store, and it's just made me so happy. It might be my favorite flannel I own right now. Don't put it in the dryer. I'm not. I don't wash my flannels for like months. I also bought two pairs of jeans. Do you know that? Very expensive jeans. At the Kroger? No, no, no. I bought <laughs> I bought a hundred. Oh, like that was an unreasonable question now. So I've been, I, I just want your take on this. I've been eyeballing some selvage denim jeans for a while, raw denim. And uh, typically they're very, very expensive. And I've been eyeballing this particular place because they make custom denim. Goodwill? No, they're called Soso Clothing and they're from Sweden. And... One pair of jeans is typically $140. So they had a 50% off sale. So I bought two pairs of jeans for the $140, ah. obviously, or 70 each. Yeah. However you want to look at it. This place, you can put in your alterations there and they'll make the jeans for you. 
I mean, it's additional for the alterations, but you can get their standard sizes. But just basic customization, you can, I got uh, indigo jeans, dark blue jeans. You can pick the stitching color that you want. You can also pick uh, what type of button that you want. I picked the rusted copper. You can also pick zipper fly or button fly. Which one do you, do you think that I picked? Zipper fly or button fly? Button. Which one would you have picked? Zipper. So here's what I said on music. I said I did pick the button fly. I don't own many button fly pairs of jeans. On music, I said, well, I think I would rather have the button fly just because it's much more accessible. And then the more I talked about it, I said, no, that's not true at all. And then I thought about it even more, and I said, did I mess up? But you know, you know what? I actually think the button fly fits a little bit better. I think you can finagle a button fly a little bit better. I'm more afraid that something will get a peek. Oh, yeah? You scared about that? With the button fly. Yeah. Also, I don't... I, I'm not a macho guy. I don't have any. I don't have any of those macho sensibilities or tendencies or anything. Right. But something about Am I? button fly jeans. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying something about button fly jeans screams. That's not a manly jean. Like that. That sounds yeah. like that sounds like a girl, not accessory. What word? One. Oh, I'm feature. Yeah. That sounds like a feminine feature on jeans is to change it to a button fly. Like to see a guy button his fly. That's just that. weird to me. Um, and Here's the funny thing about that is the uh, no, I understand. It's also just a more convenient or inconvenient. Excuse me. I understand your point 100. percent But the thing I'm going to wrap this up with: these jeans could not be more more manly. You do they advise you not to wash them for six months if you can hold off. They come in when I say raw. Most of the jeans that you buy are pre washed and et cetera, et cetera. I mean these are raw denim. They are stiff as cardboard. And yeah, le- last question. And you brought up an interesting thing about button fly access. Harder to deal with when you're going to PP. How do you PP? Are you asking me if like I'm at a urinal and I pull my pants and underwear all the way down to my ankles? <laughs> and that I've had that before. I um, walked. Do you unbutton? Un- I w- unzip. Unbutton. Unzip. Pull down, P. That's how you do it. I walked in on a guy in elementary school. So did I. And his bare ass. So did I. It's like, what are you? Why? Same guy. Pissed his pants in like uh, first grade. Dropped his. Remember, you used to have those box of markers and crayons. Dropped the whole thing. Picked up the markers and crayons and just kept using it from the piss puddle. The same kid in third grade was sitting behind him while people were reading a story. Notice he had a gigantic booger wiped on his back. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> wiped a fucking Ninja Turtle sized like Master Splinter rat booger just like right on his back. I caught, nice guy. I caught a guy in uh, class eating paper. Eating paper. Interesting. Also, and I'll tell you what right now. According I- to my mom, that'll give you worms. <laughs> my mom always tells me the most ridiculous things like be careful around birds you're gonna get infantico what <laughs> she says <laughs> she says be careful around birds and bird shit or else you're gonna get infantigo. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Sounds I'm not- like something you die from in Oregon Trail. Trail, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> never. <laughs> what else does she say? Oh, she what does she know about tetanus? Because I still might have it. I don't remember what she says, but she says not to walk through the grass with your bare feet or else you're going to get something. Lyme disease? No, I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to ask her and report i tell you what, though. I, how do we get to this? Listen, I'm done I'm with crying. Starbucks, okay? I'm crying. I'm over this Starbucks. I Every <sighs> day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. I go and order the same fucking drink, and every day they hand me a different drink. Wait, you know what's funny? I exposed Kayla 
to the app. I might even get her take on this at some point. But I exposed her to the app, and you know we've talked about. Have you gone on the app yet? No, you didn't prove anything to me with that okay. app. Okay, I'm going to show it to you at break two. So the app reveals to you so many options. Okay. You, you she went, went, went over this. She went nuts on the app, though. Like, I looked at her drink order. She had so many options, and she was like, it's too sweet. I was like, you put 50 fucking things in there. It's ridiculous. Back, I, I didn't actually want to do Starbucks talk. I just, I don't I, either. as a joke, wanted to back throw to it the out before thing. we get into our... Oh, back to the pink thing. Okay. I don't unbutton anything. I don't unbutton. I don't unzip anything. I just reach down in there, grab a healthy handful, and just flop out. Um, I'm not sure how that works. You can do that. It, to me, that sounds like your urethra isn't fully realized. Yeah, I, f- I would think it would be pinched, unless your jeans are just extremely loose. I mean, they are to a certain extent. You're a weird guy. It's just how it is. You gotta get okay. I don't want to get too detailed with it, but maybe I'll draw a schematic and post. Maybe it on I'll maybe Facebook I'll start group. pulling my pants all the way down. I think you should. I mean, think about how freeing it would feel. And sometimes I get sweaty at work. It might give me a it might give me a chance to air out a little bit. And there's some people that just feel so comfortable in the bathroom. Maybe like, I should just take less showers. Like one day, okay. Two things that that really really bother me in the bathroom. One day, the IT guy at work. Don't interact with him. Hardly ever. Say hi. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Comes right up to me, st- stands, you know, do the, hey, how's it going? Hey. Yeah. And I'm just like, are, are we there? Are we there? Because I don't think we are. So, okay. This conversation is going to go to a last place. thing. Last thing that bothers me. People who are overtly emotional when they pee. <laughs> I'm talking... <laughs> Okay, okay, I hand, got, I got, hand I got. on the wall and the Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So let me talk. Okay. Where I used to work at Lowe's. I can't um, wait for people on SK Plus to hear this whole conversation. <laughs> it's just the day that Fernandez picks it up. <laughs> yeah. Fernandez is like, oh, what's this same sound about? What is this show? They're it's, talking about pissing shit. It's so much better than, than Wangers. <laughs> Take that, copster. Um, anyway, where I used to work at Lowe's, for one, I at least with my body, when you when you open up one, I think everything kind of opens up. It's hard. So it's hard. Well, it's definitely hard. It's I'm not. Hard. I'm not gonna. Okay, who am I kidding? What do I care? We're transparent. I've never taken a shit without relieving pee as well. Well, yeah, of course. Okay, so it's kind of that thing. So if I'm at a urinal peeing... You can't do two without one. Exactly. So if I'm at a urinal peeing, naturally, I, I'm i probably going to fart. Yeah, but... So if I'm at a urinal and I need to fart, I'm not going to hold it in. Yeah, but, but like, do you, you know, are you... But at the same time, they're not... Are you obnoxious. tuning the trumpet or are you... No. Okay. So another thing that I'll say is this is a, a me thing. I'm not... I'm not sh- I don't think I am claiming that this shouldn't be going on in restrooms. I'm claiming that for some reason I'm uncomfortable with it. But anytime I walk into a bathroom and I just hear someone hawking in the stall, like hawking. Oh, oh that really? Yeah. I thought you were using like, that as like a metaphor for a I, sound of taking a dump. If that, like I wouldn't be shy of farting in the bathroom, but I would be shy of everything else. Like I, if I have to throw up in a public bathroom, forget that, man. I'm turning on all the sinks, yeah. trying to dull the noise. You know what I mean? Oh, it might work. If, they they blast music in the bathroom. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's how I find out about so many songs. If, if I'm doing anything else but using the bathroom in the bathroom, I get really self conscious about it. Yeah. Like I don't want people walking in, even if I'm like washing my face. Do you know about the fart silencer? Or, uh, or like cleaning out my nose, because I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you know about the fart silencer? No. Play something on your phone. No, no, no. You take a few. You take a long roll of toilet paper and you fold it up into squares. Get a nice little pad. Oh, like an actual silencer. Yeah, you just place it on your tuchus, and just let them go. It silences it. If you somebody told me about this, if you have an extreme uh, number two, 
you can go ahead and just flush while you're doing it. Oh, yeah. So sure. is it better? Absolutely. And I also get uncomfortable, and I'll be standing at a urinal, and if somebody's just ripping ass in the stall, I will manually flush the toilet so that I don't have to hear it. <laughs> so there was never a time when I wasn't using the restroom at Lowe's where someone beside me just wasn't blowing ass. Yeah. And it was always uncomfortable. I'd be like, oh, we're doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you vocally say that? that? No, that's that was always my attitude. Like, oh, is it time to do Because, <laughs> again, I'm self-conscious. Like, if I think that I'm going to do I'll that, t- I won't do it in public. Can I tell you something I'm self-conscious about? Yeah. I, I like to get comfortable sitting down. Like, I... I see some people that have barely pulled their pants down. Like, they've still got yeah. their pants, like, around their knees. And I'm like, how? You're restricting yourself. Yeah. Like, I don't see other people's underwear when I go So, to you the know bathroom. the concept of the squatty potty? Like, you know what's going yeah. on there? So, I don't have one. But, I would never buy one. But because of my digestive issues and things like that, I follow that practice. Right. So, what ends up happening, and for those of you who don't know, I live at home with my mother. And so, welcome to Sight and Sound. And uh, my sister, when she's not at college, but uh, shout out Taylor. Yeah, that's right. Get a job. She has a job. Oh, she is good for her. So uh, she's also a student athlete, so she doesn't need a job while she's doing that at school. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. So the way my bathroom works, there's nothing in front of me. I don't have a squatty potty, but the bathtub is directly to my left. So I sit. So you shit in the tub. I sit on the toilet sideways. I sit on it horizontally instead of. Hmm. Wait, no, no, wait a minute. I. <laughs> all right. So what, I have the bathtub to I my left. I feel about this right now. I sit to my left. I turn to my left, and I prop my feet up on the the edge of the tub. So that I can put into practice what the squatty body is all about. And I'll sit there and play points for zombies, whatever I'm this doing. This is as equally shocking to me as I wore at home. Why? No way. This is strange. No, it isn't. This is strange to me. It's it's fine. I wore at home was just based on pure... Uh, <laughs> Stupidity. Un- yeah, well, yeah, just pure first time, never this done it stupid. before. I'm just trying to accomplish well, it's stupid, it's just... I'm, I'm just it? trying to accomplish more what the squatty... More more than anything. I'm trying to get it out. Trying to accomplish hey, whatever works, man. I'm trying to accomplish what the squatty potty accomplishes, and without having to spend the twenty five or whatever amount of money. Yeah, that's uh, oh, so, I thought you were gonna talk about. Minutes. So anyway, long story short, I hear my mom walk into my bathroom, and I hear her say to herself, "Why do I always have to fasten this seat?" <laughs> mm. <laughs> so apparently, me sitting that way, I'm putting, I'm putting the weight of my body. Is that why my Seat is loose in there? No. It's a I don't little do, loose. I don't do that on your seat. Okay, well, that's good. I sit regularly on your toilet. That's good. So, so anyway, I'm watching my mom, like, tighten it. I was like, Mom, I, I sit on the toilet sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom has heard me do things. This is great. My mom has heard me do a million things uh, that involve uh, obsessive, compulsive type Alternative it, behavior. Alternative behavior. Like vaping, getting the popcorn my mom, on. My mom has heard me have like a normal conversation, just regularly saying, "Yeah, I, I think I'm dying," <laughs> but not in <laughs> like I'm just regularly saying, "Mom, I think that something's wrong with me." Of and course, if something was wrong with me, there's no way I could say it in that way. Mom, of I think I'm, I think I'm dying. All right, so this week on Sight and Sound Weekly, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, so I guess what prompted this was uh, I looked up, I looked up music for the rest of the year, and hey, guess what? Surprise! It's fucking crazy. And not only is it crazy, it's got me a little bit stressed out. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna have to quit my job or at least take a part time job in order to get all these reviews out. Starbucks, absolutely. Eric, give me a tip. Can I put your name down on a resume for a, a reference? Um, well, after all this shit, you meant to, oh, never mind. He wouldn't cuss. <laughs> what if he did just to give that response? <laughs> after, after all the fucking shit you just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I could, 
I could one day see like <laughs> just him going. I could off. S- no. Well, yeah. What would it take for him? That's to, the uh, e- that's the easy. We joke. can't go here. We may. I I could ima- I could picture Eric just like spending a weekend with you, like somewhere. Like you all hang out, and then the next time I see Eric, he's like taking the vape out of his pocket. <laughs> And then, like, we'll be walking down the street, and he'll go, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, Eric, so listening to Death uh, Heaven or something you like cuss that." Cuss now? Yeah. And then I realize it's because he hung out with you. He's talking he, about reverb and shoegaze music. I've heard Eric talk about reverb for years. Oh, of it, course. Delay, of course. Delay. Oh, I love music. delay. Love all me the some de- delay. all the delay on Kansas City Shuffle. Regardless, uh, yeah. So we're gonna be doing a fall preview, and I think it's time. Uh, well, you guys just did a summer preview. We know, but it was only a few months. And uh, the rest of the year is looking... <laughs> I don't think anybody's saying that. The rest of the year is right looking time. pretty promising. It's two Ps there. Uh, speaking of two Ps, I'm probably going to have to take a little pee pee break because we talked 33 <laughs> minutes. Oh, this bathroom. This first 30 minutes of this episode, depending... This is going to tell us a lot about our audience. It's arguably the best 30 minutes if or this, the worst if this 30 is, minutes. If this is the biggest... Sight and sound in SK Plus history. We know that we can, from now on, only upload after parties on Sight and Sound or on SK Plus. We'll judge. We'll be the judge of that. We'll be right back. So I have a video coming out on uh, the YouTube channel that I'm very, very excited about where I am going to be giving my recommendations on different pairs of headphones. Maybe you're a Beats by Dre lover, which is fine, but I think you've completely overpaid for stuff. Anyways, I'm going to run down all of my recommendations, but one of those headphones that I'm actually going to be recommending is going to be Studio Sweden. You probably heard me talk about it at the top of the show, but I just want to make sure that you guys really do know about this company. Uh, If you're ever looking for a new pair of headphones to replace those old ratty ones, the spare ones, the extra ones that you have laying around. Studio Sweden has you covered. I said it earlier, but they've got the wireless headphone option. That's what they sent me and Ryan. And I think they're really, really nice. They're comfortable. They sound really well. They're great for podcasting. They're great for listening to music, whatever the case may be. They're just a really, really cool company. Go to studiosweden.com. That's S-U-D-I-O sweden.com. Use the promo code Sight and Sound 15 at checkout to get 15% off. They've been nice enough to give us that promo code. We want to give some back to you. Again, that's studiosweden.com, S-U-D-I-O sweden.com. It never sounded so good. All right, let's get a move on. We're going to talk about movies first. I picked five movies that I'm anticipating, and Jay is going to... Can I just say that if I ever apply to Collider, I'm just going to send them the first 30 minutes of this podcast? It'd just be like, this is what you could have. I have an honorable mention. I'm not going to go All too right. far into it. I'm just going to react to these. My honorable mention is just movie, a, a movie that I don't know that if it'll be good or not, but I just want to see it because it's a movie for Ryan Snelling, and that is Birth of the Dragon, the I'm, Bruce Lee movie. I have no idea what this is. It's a Bruce Lee movie. It comes out in like two weeks. Uh, oh, yeah. Apparently, release. you're a you're an expert on Bruce Lee, which I, I never knew about. I was raised on Bruce Lee. I've Talked about it before on uh, After Schmo. Anytime a Bruce Lee question gets brought up on the Schmo Down, uh, there was actually one particular controversy where I uh, I talked about it with JT. But anyway. It must have been a different host, co-host. Yeah. So um, Bruce Lee, I was raised on Bruce Lee. I knew everything about him. I was fascinated by him. I watched a ton of documentaries on him. I watched the movie that already exists called Dragon. That's what do you think about, about his life story. What do you think about Brandon Lee? Um, it's what a, tragedy. Tra- what a tragedy. So do you know... Let me tell you something. This is a Jay Williams fun fact for you. <laughs> Factoid. Yeah. So, Info. you know, obviously, you know how Brandon Lee died. He got shot on side of the cross. Yes. And Bruce Lee's uh, final appearance in a film, I won't call it his final movie. It is his final movie, but he was only in the the end scene. Um, His character in that movie. Is it Enter the Dragon? Is it the- no, it's Game of Death. Okay. His Bruce Lee's character in that movie is an actor who fakes his death by getting shot on set. Right. And it's eerie that his son actually died from that yeah. years later. You think there's uh, some shenanigans there? <laughs> no. You don't think so at all? No. Some people think it, ha- that- it happened several years apart from each other. No, I know. Uh, I mean, but the, Brandon Lee. Thing. There would have been a rerun. Oh, oh, I don't know. I thought you meant. 
<laughs> Were these two connected? <laughs> mean it's the same guy no um it's anyway the same guy but yeah yeah because one would be fictional and one would be real so anyway. one would also just be a different person in general that's true so uh anyway i bruce lee has been uh uh someone that i've been a admirer of all my life so i really want to see this movie uh and hope that uh it does him justice um anyway so that was my honorable mention hopefully school doesn't cater the movie my number five is American Made. American Made? What the hell is that, Snelling? Well, it's a uh, movie starring Tom Cruise. Okay. Directed by Doug Lyman, who directed Edge of Tomorrow. Some might uh, say with him. Some might say Tom Cruise losing his uh, box office appeal. No. Some might say that. Some might say that, but some <laughs> might be wrong. Um, this movie, he plays a CIA informant. And he gets caught up drug running at the height, not at the height, at the precipice of the Medellin drug cartel. Everything going on with the... Uh, is this Brigham Bad? Who's, what's, what's the guy? The, the the main guy? El Chapo. Narcos. What's the guy's name? No, what is the guy's the name? The biggest, the, Johnny Depp and uh, Blow. What's the guy? Yeah, what is that guy's name? <laughs> Pablo Escobar. There you go. Thank you. El Chapo. So Tom Cruise plays a character. It's a what you would call a period piece, even though I'm uncomfortable saying something that takes place in the what seventies is well, a period piece. I don't like living um, in the past. Uh, Tom Cruise plays a CIA informant that gets caught up drug running, uh, and uh, it just looks like a really great movie. I'm excited to see Tom Cruise uh, act a little bit again, and I mean that in a respectful way because yeah. I, I love Tom Cruise and whatever he does, but. It's not just a straight up action movie. It's a it's a drama with some comedic elements. It looks like, and it just looks like an entertaining movie. Doug Liman and Tom Cruise worked very well together in Edge of Tomorrow, and uh, I want to see them uh, do something like this. And I watched the trailer, and I had a lot of fun, uh, and I enjoyed the trailer quite a bit. So uh, Doug Liman working on a superhero movie. He was supposed to do Gambit, but he yeah. backed out. So but anyway. Uh, very, I, I, I'm pumped to see it Taylor just Kitch. for all of those reasons. So I'm a big fan of both of those people and, uh, yeah, you should watch the trailer after this. It looks really good. Uh, um, all right, we'll do anything, anything on that. Not really. seems like something I probably won't see for a few years. Uh, and look, I, I think that the rest of this list there, there are movies that you could probably, probably pick out like, Oh, Snelling's absolutely going to talk about this movie. Uh, some movies that I haven't put on there, like <clears throat> mother with Jennifer Lawrence, uh, I love Jennifer Lawrence so much. I like Darren Aronofsky, except for that shitty... I, actually, uh, Anthony Bourdain ruined Darren Aronofsky for me. I, I'm not... He's fine. I respect him, I guess. I, I, I've never seen a Darren Aronofsky film and thought, wow. Have you uh, just... I have not seen Requiem for a Dream. Really? Wow. It's a powerful movie. Uh, haven't seen... Have you seen Black Swan? Yeah, I don't like it. Wrestler? No. You haven't seen The Wrestler? I guess the only... Wow. That's I guess the only Aronofsky movies I've seen are Black Swan and The Fountain. You've seen The Fountain? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, uh, there are a lot of movies like that that I didn't put on the list. Uh, I just think, you know. It, the fall to do Batman at one point. The fall season. Yeah, I never understood that. Yeah, fall, the fall season is actually my favorite season when it comes to m- movies. Fall in general for pop culture. Yeah, Giant. well, yes and no. Movies, there can be plenty of misses, but I, I'm mainly talking about the movies, <laughs> the independent darlings that finally get a chance to shine right before Oscar season. That's actually my favorite time right. to to be a film fan. Um, because, yeah, the, the, we get the junk food, we get the empty calories of the summer blockbusters, but ultimately I want to... Uh, I want the year to be sent off with, you know, something of substance and thematics. And right. so anyway, I, I very much look forward to that time. And I think something like American made, even though I'm not saying that that's an Oscar worthy movie, but it's a movie that would, you know, get smoked if it came out in May, sure. you know? So something like that, I went on, I went on the list and everything else though could be totally hit or miss like mother. I have no clue if I'm going to like, it. so, uh, and then there's that other, um, the assassin movie with Dylan O'Brien starring your boy, Taylor Kitsch, something like that. It's very intriguing to me. I love the trailers, but that could be something that could just kind of come and go. So I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable putting it on the list. So, 
Uh, American Made, I think, is probably the only movie that no one would have guessed on my list. My list is very yeah. pre- predictable. Predictable. If anything, the order of my movies might throw you off. My number four is Justice League. Um, yeah. Uh, look, again, the thing about the thing about the Justice League movie is just the fact that it's gone through so much. I mean, it's crazy how much this movie's gone through. Not that other movies don't go through as much stuff, but I mean, I don't know the last movie. Well, I guess Han Solo to a certain extent, where such big directors have had such big parts in the movie is is crazy to me. Um, also, just the tone of the greater discussion about it has changed so much. Like before Wonder Woman, people really skeptical of this movie. Post Wonder Woman, people fucking hyped about this movie that's crazy to me i find it fascinating i'm still skeptical yeah and i'm not taking a single thing away from wonder woman because wonder woman's fantastic wonder woman is its own thing i love the batman what we have right now dc's Batman. yeah not the movie because we haven't seen it yet so much in fact that you know batman v superman whatever it has the best batman in my opinion that's my favorite Batman. The ben interpretation, Batman. yeah. So I would defend both of those things. But Justice League, DC, it took them several movies to figure out how to do mostly one character piece right. movies. With the exception of BBS, obviously having a few things. But the fact that now it's like DC has all of their main characters in one place it took (laughs) them four movies to prove that they could handle one character and then the very next movie is them turning on five at a time yeah that's the thing that is i think the most worrying for me is that basically what i'm saying is the proven success of wonder woman still doesn't translate uh for what for what we might be getting with Justice League. So I mean, the just... weight of the DCEU was placed on BVS shoulders when it came out. Yeah. They're doing the exact same thing with Justice League, and that's what's worrying to me about it. Also, the fact that now, where where so you had BVS and Justice League was like the Horizon thing, I feel like they're starting to do that now with Flashpoint, which we don't have any context of the Flash. I'm excited to see the Flash. I'm very eager. I'm excited to see Aquaman, of course. Not super excited to see Cyborg. I hope it works, obviously. But just so much the tone of everything moving forward is going to be placed on the shoulders. I don't know. I don't know what a landscape, a movie landscape looks like if DC and Warner Brothers takes another L. Talk that about, is almost unfathomable. I know we need to talk about Justice League, but like even with Shazam. Shazam, you heard about all this, right? I, I know it's a little bit of a shit show. No, I'm talking about the... F- no, that's not what I'm talking about. It's... it's no, well, mainly it's, it's talking about the whole Black Adam thing. And no, I mean, that, that's not a... Sh- no, it's not a... Sh- a shit show isn't the word that I would use. It's just the fact that The Rock is just no longer playing Black Adam. I mean, that's not... That's not an indicator that the movie's horrible. It's no, just, of course. It's just a laughable thing. Yeah, some production kerfluffle. But... But, uh, no, it's the fact that the director who directed Annabelle Creation and Lights Out, um, who so comes from horror, I can't think of his name right now, uh, is directing the movie, and he said it's going to be the most lighthearted DC movie, period. Strange. Because, you know, he's playing with the kid who wants to be Shazam, or can turn into Shazam, excuse me, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be extremely youthful and lighthearted, and I think that's very interesting, especially, you know, where the DC was a year ago. But uh, anyway, the proven success of Wonder Woman, uh, it doesn't translate to me. Like, I don't, ha- I'm not overly confident about Justice League now. Right. I, th- I like the idea of it more, but that doesn't mean that I can't walk out of there being disappointed and say, oh, well, this was a mess. I think, and- I think we're going to see just, I mean, and, and we said it when we talked about Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins was a huge role in that film, obviously, just as a director in general, but her vision in my opinion, was seen on that screen um, in a similar way that Nolan had his fingerprints all over Batman when it came out. And I think we are going to see what Patty Jenkins brought to the table and what 
might be lacking with this movie. <laughs> For me personally, I might walk out of Justice League thinking that it's exempt of any criticism, period. Because I would kind of, part of me would feel uncomfortable knowing what the movie went through right. and then being that harsh on it. It has a lot because of, it has a lot of excuses. It, w- it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be incompetence. Right. It would be tragedy. Oh, 100%. T- dealing with Zack Snyder. And that is obviously something that we all empathize with. Uh, and we, can, we, I mean. Of course. So, that's another thing, too. Yeah. May, may, maybe that's what it has going for, is that if anything, I want to walk in there just to find the things to appreciate. Yeah. A- expectation I mean? level, I just want the movie to be good. Like, I, ju- I just, I don't need it to be great. I don't need it to change my life. I don't need it to change my perspective on superhero films and movies in general. I What I would love, and again, I don't know if we're going to get it, but what I've said about Age of Ultron um, is that you can debate whether Age of Ultron is a better movie or not, but regardless, there are still plenty of times where I would rather watch Age of Ultron than the first Avengers. And oh, okay. I, I, there, I thought I, you were going to go BVS, but okay. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, whether it's a better movie or not, I don't know. But sometimes I'd, I'd rather watch Age of Ultron. And, right. uh, I've only seen it once. So I, and my point is, Justice League doesn't have to be, if you want to make the easy comparison of the Avengers. Right. But if Justice League has its own uniqueness and the, certain aspects of it are fresh and unique... And I can, at the end of the day, say, sometimes I might want to watch Justice League over the Avengers. Yeah. I will consider that a win. Right. So, I agree. So anyway, uh, we'll know in just a couple months. Um, my number three movie, Thor Ragnarok. Rightfully so. So uh, Thor is um, easily the lesser, in my personal opinion, and probably public opinion, the lesser of the trilogies compared to Iron Man and Cap. Never, never seen one of them. So I I like the first one a lot, yeah. and I think Thor: The Dark World is probably my least favorite MCU movie. Period. Um, there's not been a single thing that's come out about Thor: Ragnarok that has thrown me off. Um, I mean, I have some issues with we talked about the distance and the the visuals of it, but that's also something that I guarantee will make a whole lot more sense on the big screen. Sometimes when you right. see those things on a YouTube video or on your on TV spots. It doesn't translate well. Right. So I think all that will change when I'm actually there and it's all right in front of my face. It's supposed to seem massive. It's so, supposed to seem very grand. Right. That's why I'm not freaking. I mean, I'll, I'll point it out because I'm calling it like I see it, but it's not freaking me out or anything. Um, and I think it'll probably be very specific to the identity that Taika Waititi was going with. I think it'll all make more sense within the context of the, of the movie. Um, I think the most recent thing that came out that just kind of took me back a little bit was when he revealed the runtime to Frosty. 90 minutes. Yeah. Seems like a lot's going on. That would be the shortest MCU movie. And not only that, one of the shortest comic book movies ever. Yeah. I find that very strange. That's actually not something that gets me excited. I like the idea of having a 90-minute movie. I think, like... A lot of horror movies can be 90-minute like, movies. I like 100, 100 minutes yeah. in a movie. That's that's a great movie right. runtime. But when you get into like a superhero film and when you want to see plenty of Planet Hulk, Planet Hulk stuff, when you want to see plenty of Thor stuff, when you want to see plenty of other MCU tie-ins. Stuff, World building. It doesn't. It feels like that idea, and I don't know if this is going to be the case. I actually don't think it's going to be the case. But the first thing that screamed at me was, is this going to be a skippable Marvel movie? Right. I don't think it's going to be the case. They're playing it up like it's just going to be a great filler. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, that's that's what I'm talking about. Is that like, yeah. I'm so very excited to see it. But when I hear that runtime, it's like, are you guys just a commercial for Infinity War? You know what I mean? Well, I've also never. That's a funny thing, too. I think hearing you say that, I've never felt like any of the Marvel movies have been overtly bloated. In fact, you could probably say the opposite. A lot of the Marvel movies are lacking a lot of character development to a certain extent, especially with the villains. That's been the common thing. Like, so yeah, that is a little bit strange. It's just, I think Civil War is a little bloated. I think you could. I think I agree. If I someone agree said that, I would. I didn't say I would they were. I didn't say they were all. I don't all have a problem with infallible. it. Infallible. Well, I think yeah. it's there, but I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I just thought that was strange, and I. 
it actually would be very different to me. If it was like an hour and 50 minutes, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. But an hour and 30, I just think that's so weird. I agree. So I kind of hate that. I didn't know that. I didn't hour, know that. Hour and a half of that. Thor and Hulk. Hang on. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if that's that's what he said a couple weeks ago at Comic Con. I don't know if that's actually it could be, be the completely case. justified. True. Yeah. We'll wait. But as of right now, again, calling it like I see it, I'm very kind of put off by that. But but anyway, it's it's my number three for a reason. It's because of all that goodness that we right we come to expect with this new age, quote unquote, of Marvel movies that just kind of seem yeah. to be uh, continuing the idea of staying fresh. And, What's your um, number two? Huh? What's your number two? Guess. I've already gotten rid of both big comic book movies and let, we're not <clears throat> counting Star Wars because I don't have any December releases. Let me tell you something that I would... It wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't on your list, but I would also be disappointed if it wasn't on your list, and that's Blade Runner. It is not on my list. That bums me out because it not not in general, not anything towards you. I you don't care about the first one, and I fully get it. I fully understand. Also, honestly, don't really care that much about it. Let me just say this: I was pitching this movie to somebody who is a massive Blade Runner fan and had no idea that this was coming out. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, look. The funny thing about, okay, let me actually explain this interaction to you. I was talking to somebody about Blade Runner, and uh, they loved it. Didn't realize that the sequel is coming out this year more than anything. Yeah. And so they said, well, what is it going to be? Is it a prequel? To, they just didn't know anything about it. And I said, oh, Ryan Gosling's in it. You know what sold them on the movie? Ryan Gosling? Nope. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. I said, did you see Arrival? He said, loved it. Amazing. And I said, the guy that directed it, the guy that's directed incredible movies, has such a fucking bright future, is directing this crazy, uh, you know, movie, sequel. And he was sold immediately. I I think we undervalue uh, just how big of a deal that is. It's sort of like the anti JJ directing The Force Awakens. It's like I can't get as excited about it because it's about a, it's a movie it's a sequel to a movie that I don't I'm not fond of. Look, uh, and Arrival didn't hit 100 with me. It didn't hit a home run with it's me. It's my favorite movie last year. I know. I I I really enjoyed it. And Denis Villeneuve is fucking incredible. And and I mean, if you guys, I mean, uh, obviously there's a ton of people that watch a lot of movies that listen to this, but for those that have not seen prisoners, Oh God, that movie is a fucking work of art. Yes, it is. And not only in storytelling and not, and visually, visually arrival is incredible. And Sicario mm. is such a visual masterpiece on a completely different level just wrapping all of those up. Fuck the concept of Blade Runner, okay? Just the fact that Denis it's Vi- played. Just the fact that Denis Villeneuve is making another movie should get people excited and out, and out to the movie theater. He is the star of the show. Ryan Gosling, I'll take all that you got. I am not taking anything away from those people. I'm a fan of everyone involved. Yeah, maybe not Jared Leto. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a fan of Jared Leto. I'm he's, a, he's kind, kind of, of a, things he does. I think he's a freak, but uh, yeah, but he's good at what he does. I think he's a good actor. And I think he's a good yeah, musician. He, he may or may not abuse women, but anyway, but he's still good at executing his craft. I mean, you can still separate those things. I Michael think Jackson may or may not have been. Uh, that's why I don't know how I feel about Michael kids, Jackson. But he's uh, an incredible talent. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying it. Kind of freaks me out sometimes. Anyway, yeah. no offense to Michael Jackson, rest in peace. There's been allegations. Just saying. <laughs> um, Where did this I'm not taking anything. Blade Runner might be like my number seven. Okay, like, fair enough. It's one of those things. Just because it's not on my list, it's not saying I, I hate it. I mean, I'll be there. I'm very excited. Blade Runner T-shirt coming in September. Anyway, <laughs> my number two is it. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing that. I don't give a fuck about this movie. Not only do I not give a fuck about this movie, how much do you think this movie is going to make in in the theaters? Box office, ballpark. 
50 million. 50. Yeah. I think it's going to crush. I think 40 to 50, which is a great number. Great number, 100%. Um, I, I was just curious, your take. Every year, I'm looking out for a horror movie that changes my mind about horror movies. Last year for me, it was Don't Breathe. Love that movie so much. So great. It, to me, is kind of combining the things I like about coming of age. I like the idea of having this uh, Stephen King mystery thriller. This is also something I'm not really familiar with. I know a lot of people, people in the Sight and Sound Facebook group, they've been reading up on the book again. And I kind of left it alone because going back to the whole idea, I'd rather be spoiled of the story within the movie uh, before the book. But uh, I think this is creepy as fuck. I have been so impressed, not e- and not even just from the horror aspects, but I have been so impressed from the horror aspects, the, how great uh, Skarsgård looks as the clown. I think it's just awesome. And I also just... Which Skarsgård is this? Uh, Bill. Okay. Um, There's a lot of them. Yeah. You gotta and, ask that question. And not only the horror aspects that, that have been scaring my pants off, but the filmmaking aspects of it, I just think it looks fantastic. And it just looks yeah, like you a, think those trailers look good. It, I think they're great. I just think they are great trailers. The last one completely made me just a hundred percent disinterested. I just don't agree. I just, if anything, it got me more excited. Uh, and maybe that's just because I'm coming from a place where I don't really know what I'm getting myself into yet. Whereas someone like Kevin Marks uh, has read the book. He kind of, right. he might know where it's, but but I don't. Yeah. And I also am not familiar with the Tim Curry TV movie, the original. Right. I have no context of it. Other than that, like, I know that the paper boat floating down the road is from that and it appearing through the gutter, which is in any other movie hilarious. But um, there's just something about it, man. I When I'm watching these trailers, and I think I'm going to watch this movie and get magic. And... I'm I'm very very excited for the movie. So my whole thing on this, let me just say this: uh, when I, everything that I'm saying about this movie, it wouldn't surprise me if by the end of it you walk out of it, and a lot of people are just going to say, "Man, it was a good horror movie." I don't think anything about this is going to, you know, we 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 joked on Sight and Sound Music about a certain band saving the metalcore genre. This is this has no hope of doing anything for it's not going to like make people it's not going to bring collider nightmares back okay this movie to me it looks like very very straightforward horror that is shot maybe a little bit different it's got some kids in it it's got some stand by me flavor in it it's got all that stuff all that's great but you know to use uh to to have a creature that's going to come out and scare you and, and all of these things, the psychological aspect of this that probably did fantastic in the books that Stephen King writes about so well. I just, I mean, that last trailer was nothing but jump scares and aesthetic. And if the movie is anything like that, just completely write me off of it. I like horror movies that are smarter than that. Um, and that, that that trailer just it really really let me down. My number one is Kingsman, the Golden Circle. What a great, great, great idea Kingsman is. I want Kingsman, the Golden Circle, to come out unsuspectingly in September, the same weekend as Blade Runner. And I want to walk out of that theater saying, now that was the best movie of the summer. Like, that should have been the best movie of the summer. I want it to fit right in with all of the other goodness we got with Apes and Spider-Man. I want it to fit right in, even though it came out in the shit-stained month of September. What makes Blade... What makes Kingsman... (laughs) What makes Kingsman so good to you? A lot of different things. I think that Matthew Vaughn is one of my favorite directors, period. Um, Taron Edgerton's debut as Eggsy last year really, really impressed me. I was really, really wanting him to not only play Marvel's Spider-Man, I was all about that seeing that, yeah. 
before I realized they were going to have the whole childlike take. And then I was all about seeing him play young Han Solo, which right. in retrospect, I'm fine with where they went. eventually went. But at the time, it was Taron Edgerton's the only person I could see playing Han Solo. He's a rising star for sure. Eddie the Eagle was a fantastic movie. I think he's great. I love that he's in this. I think that it's a, it's several different things. Not only is it a, a sort of a a branch off of the comic book superhero genre, but it's also um, it's also able to play in those spy movie tropes. And this year specifically, help me out. We haven't had a good spy movie. And like last year, not my year, favorite genre, huh? Not my favorite genre. Yeah. Not last year we Except had impossible. No, was it last year or twenty? It was twenty fifteen when we had Spectre, MI um, five. Was it Rogue Nation? Rogue Nation, and then there was another one. We had Man from Uncle, and we had like three or four spy movies that year, and uh, I feel like we haven't had one since then, a good one since then. So I'm I'm ready to see the spy. I also just love the duration of the sequel in general. Um, Kingsman gets blown up and then they go see the Statesman in America and the the talent that they added is great with Channing Tatum. He was just in Lexington a few days ago. Uh, I sent him a DM on Instagram. He never replied. Listen, the the, the best thing to me about Kingsman in general is it, it, it accentuates every single thing that Matthew Bond is great at. Not Fantastic. not just so Matthew Vaughn likes his style. And there are some directors out there that like their style a little bit too much. This guy Michael Bay. This guy knows how to walk that fine line while also not just relying on that. Like every it's go go back to X-Men First Class. Uh, that movie in general is pretty pretty straightforward, but it it just has this feeling of originality to it even though we've seen so many origin stories we've seen so many superhero movies we've seen so many spy movies but just to have that combination of tone humor stylization and it's just there's just a there's like an edge of punk rock about him that i just like he doesn't give a fuck i he just wants to yeah. make great movies i watched an interview with him and this was before I'm trying to think of what movie this was before it might have been before the first kingsman and the, the interviewer was just asking him about his attitude towards movies in general or, or had he seen, like, all the Oscar movies right. that year. And he was just like, no, those movies are boring. Yeah. He didn't give a shit about the thematic substance movies that I crave at the end of each year. He was like, no, those are all boring to me. And I, you, make, you, I make movies. You know when somebody can say that? When they're really fucking good at their job. Which is funny because if Michael Bay said that, I would be rolling my People eyes. People would be laughing him out of but, the room. Yeah. But because it was Matthew Vaughn, I'm like, yeah, those movies are boring. <laughs> you have a point. You make movies for fun. And you, yeah. And, but he, no one he, can say the same thing. He has, those, he has that great balance. Um, Matthew Vaughn was the guy that I was championing to do Star Trek Beyond before they announced Justin Lin. Like... I've just always been a really big fan of what he does. And I, like I said, I want to walk out of there thinking that it's the biggest movie of the year. Yeah. It, it's, and I expect that. It's hilarious too to me because there's, there's like this group of directors that, that when you sign up for what they're pitching you, you just know that they're, they're going to be hitting home runs. And it's the same thing. What we were just talking about with, with, Denny V it's uh like I feel like every one of his movies is, is going to get some sort of Oscar buzz from here on out because he has the recipe clout for that as well yeah exactly and, and I mean I love that about this class of just just directors that are just delivering and there's so many and and Matthew Vaughn like Superman is the worst comic book character to ever exist. Come at me, Kevin Marks. What about Pot Paste Pete? Superman is worse than that guy. Um, uh, Matthew Vaughn is the only person that could have gotten me excited about a Superman movie, probably. That's not true. That's I'm exaggerating, but still, I'm excited about it. Last thing I'll say, this doesn't even have anything to do with Kingsman. I just had to say it. 
X Men First Class, one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. My favorite X Men movie of all time. Agreed. And it's because. Well, what about X Men Two? It's because he knew how to fucking cast the shit out of that movie. Oh my god, are you serious? Incredible. Okay, incredible. All right, let's um, get to let's get the music. <laughs> Let's talk about music. I, I mean, that's this is sort of what spurred this whole <clears throat> conversation to a certain extent, or at least uh, made me more aware of it that we needed to do it. So it's funny because when we did our summer, we did our summer preview. I only got through like one and a half months because the rest of music just wasn't forecast forecasted. This isn't like movies. This isn't like TV. It's not like it used to be where you could look at it an, an entire year and just see month to month every single thing that comes out. Like, mm. we did a thing where, for this, we said, okay, from now until the end of November, this stops in, like, mid to late October. Like, this doesn't even, this list doesn't even go into that. With that being said, this is the most intense music release period I've ever, seen in a long time and it's not filled with like gigantic huge crazy names and i mean there are people if you want to go uh to metacritic and look at all the stuff coming out you can there will be metacritic people. yeah metacritic they do music metacritic is uh the place that i go to for all my new music release schedule stuff i didn't know metacritic how's the music the they do stuff? music but they don't keep up with it as much as um, those other things but they do have a, a breakdown of new release stuff but here's what i'm gonna say my, this list I'm assuming much like Ryan's list uh, is purely my own personal excitement. Now I am going to next week or I, I guess this week on Friday, this coming Friday, I will be breaking down other releases that I don't get to touch on to sort of give you my thoughts and opinions on them. Um, the big difference between right now and the rest of the year is that this year has been dominated by surprising albums um, surprising albums that I wasn't really looking forward to, a lot of debuts and stuff that got me excited. But this list is almost purely down to things that I am anxious of whether or not they're going to be good. <laughs> because there's, I have every reason to doubt them, and I also have every reason to uh, just get excited about them in general. So uh, I do have an honorable mention. Uh, the band, oh, this is also this list. You could talk so much about a lot of the artists on this list. Um, the Movie Life. The Movie Life are a band. They used to be on drive through Records way back in the day in the heyday when they had bands signed like Census Fail, Finch, The Starting Line, New Found Glory. I mean, drive through Records was a massive force in the pop punk music genre, um, ushering along a lot of screamo and post-hardcore music. And The Movie Life was a band that a lot of people really, really liked as pop punk came up. They broke up at their most successful period in their career, people have been waiting for a movie life album for, for a very, very long time. They are back together on rise records and they have a new album coming out. The reason it didn't make this list is because I am looking forward to this album so much. I've been waiting for it. The first song was not just a disappointment. It was straight up bad. It was a bad song. I don't say that a lot. I can say things are not for me. I can legitimately say this song was not good. How much of a letdown do you think that is? For well, me? I'm already let down. I I don't. I've never heard this band in my life. Yeah, but I love the band name, the movie life. Yeah, uh, I mean that that's a band name I can subscribe to. Members went on to be in a band called I Am the Avalanche. I've uh, heard of that band. Yeah, the lead singer of I Am the Avalanche is the lead singer of the movie life. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, but like, why well, I hate to hear that, Jay. <clears throat> Anyways, we're gonna kick it off with number. Five and man, am I excited to talk to you <laughs> about this band? I already forgot the name of the album. Uh, that they're oh, yeah, no, I have it right here. Um, the number five band that I'm looking forward to coming out in September Circus Survives The Amulet. Okay, yeah. um, number five on my list, huge fan of Circus Survive. Uh, I went through most of my life always dreaming to see them live, really, really wanting to see them live. That passionate, huh? Love. I mean, their debut album. Well, I was a massive Seosin fan, like you were. Hello. Seosin fan, or Seosin fan to me, that word was back with Circus Survive, or I'm sorry, with Circus Survive frontman Anthony Green. 
followed him along uh, their debut album, Juturna. Just think it's incredible from front it's to back. It's a great album. The thing about the thing about Circus Survive for me is that as albums come out, I have enjoyed the full albums less and less. They've just become less interesting to me because they rarely, rarely, rarely change. They are in the similar cycle. Dance Gavin Dance. Of Dance Gavin Dance, of Every Time I Die, even of Architects to a certain extent. So do you, did you feel this way about like On Letting Go and Blue Sky Noise and all that? Everything got, they became better they became a better band from album to album as you would. The more you do things, the better at it you get. But they're just, when you picked up a brand new Circus Survive album, there was no question that you knew what you were going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no question I know, at Yeah, all. I know what you mean. It's rock music, sort of out there, sort of uh, different. They're a different band. But um, I like their last album. In fact, I like parts of their last album. Do you know why I've, I just never have listened to it. Why? They were on a record label called Sumerian Records. Yeah. That record label, at least at the time this album came out, refused to put their stuff on Spotify. (laughs) And that changed like a few years back, and I just haven't really listened to it that much. For whatever reason, I made that statement about wanting, dreaming of seeing them one day. But you've seen them. I saw them. I've seen them three times in three years. (laughs) It was so strange. First time, huge letdown. Second time uh, was for their... uh, Actually, the second time, I didn't even go to see them. I went to see Balance and Composure and left halfway through the Circus Survive set. (laughs) The third time I saw them, uh, Juturna 10-year tour, seeing that album from front to back, incredible. Um, But I might be going to see them again. They just announced a big tour with... Thrice. Balance. Co-headlining tour with Thrice, which is strange that Thrice is on it because they don't have a new album coming out. But anyways, yeah, and Balance and Composure. Uh, might be going to see that in North Carolina. On my way. You know why I'm going to North Carolina instead of the Chicago show? One, I don't like Chicago. No offense to anybody from Chicago, but it's not my favorite place. Take that, Garrett Rap. I also would like to go to New York because I'd like to pick Eric up on the way there. And take him. You said North Car- You said New York, but you meant North. I meant North Carolina. Carolina. Sorry. Well, you all have fun. Okay, you don't want to go to North Carolina. You didn't invite me. You you fucking decided to take my friend Eric instead. You can go. Oh, great. You can go with us. Excellent. What's your number four? Kayla's also been really into circus survival lately. Uh, this new Citizen album. Citizen. As you please, Citizen. Citizen. You know what's funny about Citizen? Saw him with Circus Survival. <laughs> don't care about this band really didn't care about them and what's even stranger about them is they are the band that's like the first recommendation if you are fans of balance Cir- Capote, oh yeah, yeah like a hundred percent would i like them i think you like them a lot actually i've never heard them i think you'd like them a lot um one of my favorite condition songs it's called citizen yeah so this this band they're they blend uh they blend early era emo with a little teeny Sprinkle of post hardcore, also with that sort of, that sort of grunge vibe too. Um, very yeah. aggressive guitars. They can get sort of slow. They put an album out not that long ago. They, they put an album out called Youth that was really really big. Uh, really sort of broke them through. A great critical acclaim. The album following that, I think it's called like Hyperview. That album got panned. The production on it was shitty. They tried to do some weird like shoegazy thing. They're sort of back. Not only are they back to their original sound. But they're also embracing good songwriting, like <laughs> great choruses and stuff. Yeah. This uh, first single they dropped off of it, even though I don't give a shit about this band, it's actually pretty damn good. Um, in fact, registers on the on the Snelling algorithm. On the Snelling algorithm, oh, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I was impressed with it. Um, listened to it the other day on a car ride to Frankfurt to Hibachi, and thought to myself, "This is just a great song." Um, and so yeah, I'm excited about this Citizen album. You excited about it? You gonna listen to it? I'm not excited about it because I have n- no idea who this band okay. is, but I'll check it out absolutely. I, I, I would assume that we're gonna talk about it on weekly when it comes out. Is that accurate? Maybe. Could you, could you talk about Citizen? Is it that big? Here's the problem with talking about some of the stuff on weekly. A lot of most of these albums come out the exact same week. Oh no! And that's a huge thing that I'm right. gonna have to figure out. Okay, the best way to do that. Well, maybe I'll come on uh, <clears throat> the music show. We'll figure it out. We'll figure the best way to do it. Number three. 
the new Inner Shikari album called The Spark. Now, here's the funny thing about this album. The single that came out on it, not feeling it. Was not excited about it. Their last album they put out called The Minesweeper, I think is what it's called. Not a great album. However, they did put out an album called A Flash Flood of Color some years ago that was either number two or number one for my album of the year or the year it came out. We talk all the time about uh, the great things that Bring Me the Horizon are doing. We talk a lot about the Plot and You, that Plot and You song that we listened oh, to yeah. earlier. Yeah. Inner Shikari have been doing ambitious things in this genre of music for a very, very long time. Now, the thing that I will say about them is that they take a lot of risks. They do a lot of things. Sometimes they don't always pay off. Sometimes they get very, they're a very uh, politically conscious band. A lot of their music is, talks about politics, um, social issues and this and that, global issues. And the problem uh, that I usually have with artists like that is it's very isolating. You know, I mean, I, nine times out of 10, I sometimes I agree with those things, but still. Or maybe of its time. Yeah, and it can be very, very preachy from time to time, too. Yeah. And I just don't like that. The funny thing about Inner Shikari is they can keep things a little bit lighthearted, too, and fun, so it never really comes across that way. But they have been blurring the lines of music between electronic music and just metalcore and, and just hard rock in general for a long time. And A Flash Flood of Color is one of the most dynamic and diverse albums that I've heard from a band of this genre maybe maybe ever. I'm going to say that. This ever? album ever. This album But his vocals are so annoying, Jay. Well, that's that's for you. I mean, that's your personal I don't care opinion. About vocals. Well, that's your personal opinion. I mean, you know, and I I mean, I enjoy it, but I can also say from a critical perspective, there's some movies that I watch that I never want to fucking see again, okay? But they're executed great. In terms of just pure execution, here's the picture <laughs> I will paint for you. And I use this example all the time. Inner Sakari is the requiem for a dream of pants. That's a great, that's a great <laughs> distinction. Uh, Architects. Sounds so ridiculous. Architects, All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us is a fantastic metalcore album. Yep. Do you know how sick of that album I get after listening to it for 20 minutes? God only knows that we were born to burn. It's it becomes so monotone, and that's my biggest criticism about music of this genre is that it becomes one note after a while. Like if the and we talked about it with August Burns Red. If you are at any point no longer interested in listening to the style of music, there's no hope for you getting any further in the album. That's why I talk all the time about albums needing to have peaks and valleys. They need to change it up. That's you know, uh, I mean, name an album that you think is fantastic. Oh, Sleeper, Son of the Morning. Okay. Well, I don't know about that album that much. But Seosin, that Seosin album that you like with the beetle on it, with the bug. Seosin. Okay. That album, it has times where it's very in your face and times that it pulls back and it's a little bit slower. This band does that on this album. From front to back, it's a fantastic album. So I'm always going to be excited and interested in checking out what this band does because they're constantly pushing themselves constantly challenging their listener base, constantly uh, trying to take risks. And that, as a music lover, somebody that is obsessed with music, is super, super interesting to me. Um, it, would you even remotely give this a, a shot? If you forced me to talk about it on the podcast, I would. The funny thing about this band is... Uh, I, I, I've tried to get into them, Jay. I remember the first time I listened <laughs> to them. I listened to, I mean, years ago when I was right. actually involved in this type of music. I heard right. them, I heard a lot of synth. And at the time, synth was so annoying to me because I thought it, I heard synth was just noise. And right. it, it was sort of like a trend going on at the time. And so I just, that's just all I heard. And I couldn't get into it. And then when you, you started uh, bringing them back up probably, probably about a year ago. and uh, This band is a band that literally fell off the radar for me, and because of that Flash Flood of Color album, it was the album that I listened to reluctantly, and after a while, I said to myself, this is so fucking good. And I did that again recently. I'm sorry, continue. I don't have much else other than I just... I tend to think that his vocals are annoying. I get that. They're not for everybody. A hundred percent. I'm not 
I would never put that past anybody or think that that was a ridiculous statement. What I will say for people that are interested that might want to get more context of things, I am leading up to this album. I am going to be doing a review series on all of their albums leading up to this. Um, so if you are interested, interested in it, I've also put together a inner Shikari starter pack. Basically, <laughs> if you want to get in on the ground level and maybe test your waters on stuff. I mean, this band has something for everybody. Uh, they you have, can post a playlist. Is that what you're talking, about? What I'm talking about? Yeah. Put they, on the Facebook. Group. They have a, they have like some hard rock aggressive stuff. They have just great songwriting, uh, pop appeal they you can fucking dance to them sometimes he even raps he embraces yeah. some, some rapping from time to time just interesting stuff but uh yeah i'll be involved in all that number two <sighs> counterparts you're not you anymore which is not my favorite counterparts title. uh stillborn we listen to it all the time. You play that song <laughs> every time I'm in your car. <laughs> it's a great song. That's a great album. My story with Counterparts, uh, I love, grew up on this genre of music, but the genre of music that I was really passionate about within the genre of music, the subgenre, some people might call it, I don't know if anybody's ever owned a plant before, but would be melodic hardcore. Melodic hardcore, I'm, I just, I love it. Bands like Misery Signal, Shy Hulud. It prevails. You know, I'm a big It Prevails it fan. It prevails life in your way. 100%. Brave the Storm. And Counterparts is a band that's still keeping that alive. Don't let anybody, don't let Luke Jaggers tell you any different. His favorite band's irrelevant. <laughs> you talking about Slipknot? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> Slipknot's not irrelevant. <laughs> that's not fair. But regardless, <laughs> Counterparts, hey, uh, Counterparts... Shoot. You talk about practice counterparts is the fucking shit dude they are so talented they do have a little bit of that issue uh that i we've talked about with august runs red we just talked about it with architects mm. architects album last year was the best heavy music album i heard uh tragedy since that's the spirit maybe yeah well so that's the spirit came out the year before that's what i'm saying yeah 100 percent um and that's a spirit it m might have needed to grow on me even over time. I didn't appreciate that album as much until much later. But regardless. Me too. I remember. Counterparts, uh, Tragedy Will Find Us is such a great heavy music album. And when I go into heavy music albums like this, really, I just need them to be f exactly what I'm going into the movie to see. Like when I'm going into see, in to see Kingsman, it needs to be just a really fucking fun ride. That's what I need this album to be. Uh, the lyrics on this album are fantastic. They've released two singles that I think are incredible. Um, one of which, uh, the song No Servant of Mine, in my opinion, is one of the best hard, uh, aggressive music songs that I've heard so far this year. It's catchy, even though there's no singing in it. It's it's fast, it's quick, it's it's over and it's done with. Even Kayla liked it. Um, I just really appreciate it. What do you, you've heard some of the stuff. What do you think? I really haven't heard that much. I mean, I heard you've that heard Stillborn song. song, but that's about Not all Stillborn, I got. that's a I, old song. No servant of mine. I know what I'm saying. I'm talking about counterparts in, in general. general. I've only heard Stillborn, so I I don't really know. But I think that of all the bands that you've listed so far, I think Stillborn is. Or I think the counterparts <laughs> is the band that I just want to say Stillborn because yeah. it's a very awkward and disturbing image. Counterparts is probably the band so far that I will be mostly interested in. Right. So I think that this is the one that gets me the most excited. Um and. Uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it, especially since you, I mean, to hear the first two sequels are great, or sequels, singles are great, um, that pumps me up even more. So I need to go check those out. I'm surprised we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about those on Weekly. I'm surprised. When did those come out? The singles themselves? Yeah. Um, there was the first one, I think it's called Bouquet, uh, came out a little while ago, and it didn't really resonate with me as much. I was excited about it, obviously, but that one's grown on me a little bit. No servant of mine. It's just the thing about that song is it's so quick. I mean, it's only like two and a half minute long song. Like you want to do a whole fucking seg segment about that song that I no. mean, there's no question about it that this thing is going to be something I think people that enjoy this type of music need to look into. This is an, again, another band that I, I've loved this band for a very, very long time. I think their first album is fantastic. And I the shout out to shout out to Brandon Turner because 
Brandon Turner and I went and saw uh, Every Time I Die live in Louisville one time. And I saw, I went to that show to see Every Time I Die in a band called Real Friends. And I saw that Counterparts was on the show. And I was like, oh, I used to like this band. You know, it'll be cool. And I remember saying to myself, this is the first concert I've been to in a while, especially of this style of music. And I was like, ah, there's no way I'm going to mosh. There's no way anything's going to happen. I might not even be into watching a band like this because back in the day when they would bring the mosh, oh, I'd be inside, you know, I'd be in that pit. Dogs are going crazy. They're moshing right now. And uh, <laughs> so Counterparts plays, and dude, I was like, this is fucking great. Like <laughs> when you something about seeing that style of music live, it just gets your blood yeah. pumping. And they were just so impressive to me. And uh yeah, I was just excited about it. And I'm excited about this album. Number one, you have no fucking idea what this is. Well, I'll just go on and just go do your thing. The Bar Brothers. I thought you were gonna say Foo Fighters. No, fuck <laughs> no. I don't give a shit about the Foo Fighters. Uh that's not true at all. It is true. I don't care about the Foo Fighters. Are you fucking kidding me? They they offer nothing to modern music. They're a great band. I'm not saying they're not a great band. How often? Oh, every band for Jay has to start a revolution. How often have you listened to the most recent Foo Fighters album? I listened to Dear. What was the most recent? Oh, that exactly. that seven song one. I was trying to think. The seven song yeah. one that's got uh, the river song on it. Listen, when we go to Foo Fighters concerts, we don't want to hear the new songs. Hits. We just want to hear the hits. Hits. Right? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying. Every band has to be a revolution for Jay. They have to, every band has to change. Shout out to Probot. You ever heard of Probot? No. Exactly. Shout that's out Dave to- Grohl's other band. Okay. Shout yes. out to... Huge, probiotics. Huge respect to Foo Fighters. <laughs> Regardless. Have you ever heard of Nirvana? That's Dave Grohl's other band. <laughs> the dogs are going fucking nuts. And I, I hope that the podcast can hear it. <laughs> the Bar Brothers. This was my album. Of, well, their album is called Queens of the Breakers. Uh, the Bar Brothers, Silent Operator, their last album that came out two years ago, I believe. That's my album of the year. I never, what? I've never heard you talk about it. I have never. I, I had never heard of this band ever. This band, you would enjoy quite a bit. They are uh, a little bit of the singer-songwriter folk sort of element, but in a much better way than all that horse shit going on with Mumford and & Sons and uh, Sturgill Simpson. The Avid Brothers, get the fuck out of here. This band is all about great, 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 great songwriting. When I listened <laughs> to the Bar Brothers Silent Operator, you know what I thought of? Garth Brooks, the fucking Beatles level of incredible mind changing songwriting, mm-hmm. except better, way fucking better. I mean, this is a band that brings incredible instrumentation, beautiful, beautiful, just, just song structures. And it's, it's just great. They're songs that are, they do make you think this is like watching a Denis Villeneuve movie <laughs> while also having the, uh, palpability, the crossover appeal, the catchiness of a fucking Marvel movie. Like, it's those two things married together. It's everything that I love about music wrapped into one. Things that every time I listen to it, I'm feeling different emotions, but I can also just put it on the background because it sounds fucking great. Like, it's just really, really good music. And not enough people know about this band. Uh, I preached about this band for a long time in 2014. Uh, they sort of just didn't do anything for a while, but um, I love them. You guys want somewhere to start? Silent Operator is a great album from front to back. We talked about Manchester Orchestra. You want to hear a better version of that Manchester Orchestra Please. album that just came out? Go listen to Silent Operator. Why on earth have you never mentioned them to me before? Honestly, I kind of forgot about them after a while, but it's just because I'm constantly having to keep up with new music. When this single... This when you new- have your ear to the ground, as much as Jay Williams, you forget about the Bar Brothers. Exactly, but I also listen to it on repeat for like two years straight. Am I going to dig this? I think you're really going to like it. I think, and you know what's funny is one night we were sitting in the living room 
And and this is on me, 100%. And Kayla decided to put on a song of, uh, I think, Tyler Childers, who is a singer, songwriter, sort of country guy. Yeah. And you asked if you would like it. And in my mind, I was like, I don't know. And I think all the time about how you do like artists like um, – Dave Matthews, that's sort of a I do. run of the mill. But like, how do you feel about Jack Johnson? You ever listen to much of Jack Johnson? He's fine. Stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got fine. a new album coming out too. I mean, I feel like that stuff sort of resonates with you a little bit. City this, and color, a hundred percent, dude. If you like that stuff, this is on another level. And I say it, and I say that to you because, like I said, songwriting is very important to you. Songs that make sense, songs that are catchy. They're great. Yes. And this has all of that. And this has, and in a different way that the aggressive music that I tried to show you all the time or the rock music that I try to show you all the time, this has something for everybody. The only people that wouldn't enjoy this are people that just aren't open to music that is a little bit more lighter, yeah. you know, um, yeah. but it's thought provoking. It's, uh, it's just fucking good, dude. I don't really know what else to say. I would recommend getting up on a beautiful Saturday morning, taking a walk, taking a drive. That's tomorrow. Taking a For drive us. and uh, putting on this album and it, or not this album because it's not out yet. But um, Silent Operator, it's that good. Excellent. Um, is that it? That's it. That's it for music. Uh, Going to talk need, a lot more on Sight and Sound music. Though. Do we need to take another break? Let's take a quick break uh, just so I can get a water. Um, I've exhausted myself. Yeah, we still have to podcast. I know you're looking a little tired. You need to be twelve. Yeah, I'm losing it. I know. I feel. You. I don't know why. I feel you. It just went. My spirit just. Went you know away. what it is? No, the beer. It's, it's oh, maybe the beer. Thought I it was th- a vape. I thought you meant my vape. I was like, no, it doesn't do anything to me. Okay. Extinguished anxiety, but it's all that. We sort of got too energetic at the at the entrance, didn't we? Maybe. It's I was Asian food. I was lot. La- it said MSG. Maybe. It said OPP. But I was laughing and carrying on in that first segment. I know. I'm gone. You lose it in the music segment, so we're going to have to start talking about that last. All right, we'll be right back. It is hot outside. It's summertime. You're going to the beach. You're going to the lake. You're going on hikes. Whatever you're doing. Maybe it's too hot to go outside. I have no idea. But I'll tell you what. It's so hot that you've got those nasty, gross pit stains and all those old t-shirts. So we've got you covered. Go to sightsoundpod.com, pick up your sight and sound gear. We've got a summer line coming out with some incredible designs. I am biased because I designed them, but that's okay. They do look good, I promise you. There's a lot of great stuff over there. We're always releasing new t-shirts. We have a new limited design that will only be available for the month of July. And we've got a new limited design coming every single month. But go to sightsoundpod.com and pick up your t-shirts. You're going to feel good about yourself because not only are you supporting the podcast, not only are you doing your part to help make the podcast better, you're going to look fantastic while supporting the show. Sightsoundpod.com, pick up your t-shirts today. All right, guys, he's getting tired. It's my job. I get tired. What? It's my. When weekend. have you ever gotten tired? I get tired when we podcast late. <laughs> I, I got a second win. To quote Jay Williams. Your mic's it's falling. Just, it's just it's really limp. It's just really not a big deal. Oh, yeah? For some reason, you're weird. You don't care to not have that much sleep at night. At least that's what you say. I don't. I get an average about... Five to six hours of sleep. That's crazy. Every single night. Wow. You know why? Because I can still function. Can I function at my full ability? No, not always. But that's fine. You still get the job as done. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about <laughs> TV. Uh, our top five most anticipated series. Are we Are we doing this top ten style? Yeah. And you know what's funny? is It's nice that top ten's back because it's <laughs> officially given me like, oh, that's right. That's how it's done for sure. Um, okay. You want me to go first? Yeah. My number five is Mind Hunter. What the fuck is that? A TV series on Netflix brought to you by David Fincher. Sir, you said at the top of the show, or no, off air, you said, there's one series in particular. 
if you if it's not on your list, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, oh, it's on my list. I don't remember because what, I thought you were going to have Mine Hunters on I don't your list. Even remember it, it, what this is exactly. It's uh. Please remind me. There's a lot of TV. That list when I was going through the list, I was like, there's a lot of stuff in here I don't really care about that much. But there's still a lot. I'll of pull stuff. it up here again because the summary will help me out. But I know that. Uh, it's based on a book, and it's about uh, an FBI elite serial crime unit. And uh, yes, I do. Yes, a hundred percent. I know what this is now. Yes. Oh, you do. Yeah, this sort so of remind, stop talking. About yeah, it. this sort of reminded me a little bit of like if David Fincher did a like you know a true crime podcasts are very big right now. Um, I feel like it is sort of capturing in on that as well as like a little bit of a true detective vibe with a David Fincher approach and twist. The, 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 there's one, th- because, you know, it's just a detective series, and I think it's, I think they're using previous murders from serial killers to solve. That's how I understand it. It reminded me a little bit watching it of like, if the X-Files was about real things. Um, David Fincher was crucial in bringing... House of Cards to Netflix. Yes. I've since kind of moved away from House of Cards. Yes. I think a lot of people have, but... There's not a lot of places I want, that should have I want David Fincher to come back to Netflix. So there's that. Um, the only thing that bums me out about this show is that there's no one interesting acting in it. They're all complete no-names. I think, like, the third-person build plays the main guy that took part in Project Mayhem. That kills Robert Paulson. Right. Like that one guy in that scene. Jared Leto. No. <laughs> Not Jared Leto. Uh, that guy's like the third build on this entire show. Hey, did you know Jared Leto's in Fight Club? Yes. So the cast doesn't excite me. Yeah. But David Fincher back on Netflix. And a Netflix, I didn't watch The Killing. Did you watch The Killing? Yeah, 100%. It's fucking great. The first two seasons are incredible. Shout out to Patty Jenkins. This blew your mind. <laughs> I, w- I want to see something like this. I know we have Ozark. We have the Ozarks. We have the, the kind of Ozark's criminal overrated. criminal drama thing going on here with Netflix, but um, I think this will hit me in the spot. Yeah. I, I, I'm very excited to see something like this happen. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and I'm, I'm hoping that bit. it has uh, what, what I talked about on Fly Club. I did a Stardust reaction. I'm hoping that this sort of has its own attitude and personality to it. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, we talk all the time. Well, we talked a lot of this episode about style, talk a, about directors and their style. For for me, even even though David Fincher has his very unique and specific look that he has that is often imitated by people, he's sort of anti-style. He sort of just like color grades things, and that's what he does. Like, just moves along. Yeah. Uh. I mean, I think so. I mean, he's a great cinema. Well, I'm sorry. He's the people who do his cinematography are great cinematographers, but he knows how to set up and frame a, a shot that's very interesting and lighting and all of those things. But I wouldn't say the first thing that comes to my mind with David Fincher projects isn't necessarily stylization. They do have a look. I d- I agree. Yeah, I think you could tell a David Fincher movie apart from any 100%. other movie. Yeah, just by looking at it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh. What's your number five? <laughs> My number five. This is going to surprise you. Let me just say this. The Gifted is not on this list. I am excited about The Gifted. I hope the best for The Gifted. In fact, I'm probably going to at least attempt to cover The Gifted on our YouTube channel. <laughs> but My number five is Runaways. Do you know what Runaways are? Yes. Okay. Maybe see family. Very, very excited about this. Extremely excited. I think uh, this is refreshing. I thought Runaways was Hulu. Is it Hulu? The ABC Family Show, which is actually called Freeform, is uh, Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. I'm sorry. Are you talking talking about Runaways or Cloak and Dagger? talking about Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger (laughs) on Freeform. uh, Yes. I've mixed it up. Yeah. Um, Regardless. Cloak and Dagger. I didn't know that came out this far. Maybe it doesn't. I saw Runaways. (laughs) It got, it got mixed up with what it is. When does when does when does uh, Cloak and Dagger come out? It is 
2018, so it's not the fall. So my number five is The Gifted. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm excited about Cloak & Dagger regardless. This is going to be the closest thing to the best superhero TV show stuff we have, which is CW stuff. And that was going to be my only sell. The Gifted. I'm excited about The Gifted. I really am. I think, uh, I think the show in general... <sighs> has a lot going for it. Um, just just for the sole fact that it's something different from Marvel on TV that isn't bullshit ABC stuff and isn't the Netflix stuff. Like, there's got to be something else. Now, I, I get it. I get the criticism. I think, I mean, you could, I would argue that Fox is worse I'm, I'm going, than ABC. I'm going in that way. But the only thing that you have to to build that off of is, is just by pre-existing stuff. And you're completely validated in that regard, a hundred percent. But this is also, look, I'm, I'm not expecting the show to blow me away. I'm not expecting the show to be on the end of a year list. Okay. I was super close. I had to mark out and I'm not joking. This isn't a joke. Fucking Supergirl. Okay. Like, it's okay to be entertained by television shows I in agree. some way, shape, or form. And as long as this show is watchable for me, it's a success. And so far, what I've got on Netflix from superhero TV has not been watchable for me. It just hasn't been. Something's taken it out of me regardless of... It's not shtick, regardless of what it is. I, I would hate to be you. I can't fucking finish the shows, okay? I hope for the best for the Defenders. But, you know, uh, I like X Men. I like mutant stuff. I love stuff. X Men. I I want sign me up. I I want the show to be good. I I I do. I don't see it happening. You're I think, skeptical right now. I think we're gonna get a fun, great pilot, and I think every other episode is going to just. I I I could see myself watching the second episode, being disappointed, watching the third one, and then jumping ship right after it. Right. Um, that's sort of just been the pattern with some of these, uh, with some of these network shows that I get excited about. It's always the case. The pilot's always great enough. Oh yeah. Revolution. You remember that show that yeah. was about the, the power going off? Yeah. But here's the big JJ. thing about, here's the big thing about those that's completely different. And you can say what you will about what shows like this have going for it. It's operating within the X-Men universe, okay? Like, those other things don't have... As as much as other installments play within the same universe. I mean, it's... Yeah, and those, it's things, there, but it's, those things are interesting to me. Without, it's ambiguous. Without giving too many spoilers away, one of the fun things about watching Supergirl for me, and I say fun, again, I'm not holding it in high regard. In fact, I'd probably give it a hard B-, minus, but I can still enjoy it. Uh, one of the funnest things for me was from episode to episode seeing who the fuck was going to pop up. Now a show like Legends of Tomorrow, I unwatchable for me. Just completely too campy for me. Um, You know, if this has a little bit of VOC in it, if this <laughs> does have a little bit of CW types of shows mixed with cool action and stuff like that and uh, some fun... TV. Well, it definitely won't be like the OC because it's people that are on the run instead of being in high school. But I'm talking about the drama types of aspects of it oh. in general, the over the top melodramatic stuff. I just don't care. Like, and and again, to support what I'm saying, I, I'm going to throw that out there is there is pre existing, con th there's a universe that this operates in that I'm interested in. I'm just interested in it. And yeah, you could throw the whole Gotham thing out there, but you know, I mean, I think if you wanted to, I think if you wanted to, if you wanted to spend time with Gotham, you could probably watch it and get through it and at least have it be digestible for you. I watched like the first six episodes. It was whatever. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I don't need it. I, cer I certainly don't miss it or anything, but it's not like I hated it. Right. Benjamin McKenzie. Talk about the OC. Um, look, I, how old is that guy? I, I'll be 14? there probably like 40. Um, wasn't he that age in the OC? No, I think he was like 27 when the OC like started. Um, 
anyway, I'll be there opening night. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a premiere. But uh, I'm also very uninterested by the entire cast. Yeah, it's not super exciting. Um, my number four, better things. Uh, punt because it's my number three. Okay, what's your number? So we can four? talk about it next. Uh, n- my number four is the Orville. And this was gonna be the thing that I was gonna be annoyed with you if you didn't put it on your list. Um, I think the trailer was funny. We yeah. watched it together. Seth MacFarlane is hit or miss. I haven't enjoyed Seth MacFarlane in a long time. I think the first, I think, I'm trying to think of how many seasons of Family Guy I love. Like five or six, I think. Love the show. Yeah. Every additional Seth MacFarlane show, I didn't care for. I Cleveland and American Dad. Wasn't that into. Ted, I enjoy his movies. The joke gets old after a while. A Million Ways to Die in the West I didn't give a shit about. He is hit or miss. Right. I love this trailer, and I love the fact that it's parodying something that I think should be parodied, which is Star Trek, um, and many other sci-fi tropes. The only reason why is because I could tell, even though I'm enjoying this trailer, this could be a shit show. Because it's, because it's Seth MacFarlane. And the other thing, too, is that TCA just ended, not Teen Choice Awards. Television Critics Association. That just ended. We talked about the Hilarious and Humans panel. Coming out of there, people are saying the old role is horrible. That's fine. So I'm right now, that's where I'm teetering. Right. So it wasn't going to make my list. Right. Look, here's my thing. The only thing I've seen of it is the trailer, and I thought it was hilarious, and pretty much everything that you've already said. Here's one thing that Fox can get right from time to time are comedies. I think New Girl's hilarious. I've never watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine or whatever it's called. What's the show called? Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. People like it. People seem to enjoy I like it, it quite yeah. a bit. Um I think they probably give Seth MacFarlane a little bit too much leash. Out of, I mean, this this thing looks like it's four fucking shows. This thing looks like it's had some money spent on it. I will say that for sure. Um, even though it obviously looks ridiculous at some points, but um, yeah, at the very least, a show like this, this isn't ever going to be something that I need to watch every episode of. If it's <laughs> funny, and I catch it every now and then, and if it becomes at least a followable hit that I could just turn on Hulu every now and then, it's done its job for me. Something like a Fresh Off the Boat or... Fresh Off the Boat is a great show. I love Fresh Off the Boat. It is such a good show. Eddie Wong, I'm a huge fan of anything he does. Have you watched The Goldbergs? I haven't, but Brian Callen's on it. I know that. (laughs) Yeah, I watched an episode. It's It was funny. It made me laugh out loud. Yeah. But I was annoyed by it. Really? It, It was... It's just loud. In the way that, like, a Nickelodeon show is loud, where so much of the comedy relies on the fact that the person is just yelling. Yeah. And it was so fast. It's already fast. Because, you know, a lot of these, like New Girl, you know the, how the pace that New Girl moves. Yeah. It's so quick. The editing is so fast. On top of that, everything is loud. So it became very annoying very quickly. And I watched an episode that was de- dedicated entirely to 89 Batman. Here is why I know we're not I know we're not talking about Fresh Off the Boat. Here's why Fresh Off the Boat is a great show. One, the thing I talk about all the time, being sick of the 80s, is a show that's set in the 90s. It's also set in fucking Orlando, Florida, which like what show needs to be set in Orlando, Florida? Also, having an Asian family on television is a massive, massive, massively awesome Feet. thing. Yeah, incredible. The cast is great on it. It has very clever and uh just it's different because it's based on the life of eddie wong and his life is such an interesting take he's a he is an asian american living in florida with his dad having a dream of owning a restaurant and he is obsessed with 90s hip-hop it's just the most ridiculous thing yeah but it's real life to a certain extent and that's what makes it show so special. In fact, I think more people should be paying attention to that show. Interesting. I'll and definitely check it out. Have you not really paid not attention to it? Being a kid that grew up relatively around the 90s and stuff, 
I think you'd appreciate it. Sweet. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, so let's talk about better things. Go ahead. Is that your number three, right? It was my number three. And then I'll get to my number three? Yeah. So better things, it's just simply that I was so impressed with it. I I enjoy Pamela Adlon so much. Underrated. Off of, uh, I f- was first introduced with, to her through Californication. I thought she was a standout. She was really great on it. And then obviously her connection with Louie and then her ability to kind of uh, – turn that idea of a show and make it her own and obviously louis produces this thing much more just, straightforward and digestible i think than yeah louis is. yeah it's it's easier but um, still smart and yeah definitely and i just enjoy it and it's the, it's it's the fact that so many of these com i'm coming around on this comedy i mean it's just what we got with atlanta and obviously yes. louis louis we've loved for years and just such a great time mass something like master of none as well where aziz ansari is able to do this kind of stuff i i'm just I didn't want to have this type of list without involving that kind of show because I think that smart comedies like this reinventing the 30 minute television show and somehow every season, depending on what you're talking about. So with master of none mm-hmm. with Louie, I think with all those shows, every season flips the switch every season, it reinvents itself or brings you something new to the table. It's like a great, album. an entire season of, an entire season of Louie was focused on getting ready for this hurricane in New York. Yeah. And the entire season of Master of None, second season was different than the first. It's just like, I expect something different and something greater and they can, from this season. And they can go off the beaten path. Like, yeah. if they're sick of telling that story, it right. it makes sense for Atlanta to do an entire show about, uh, you know, a BET style right. <laughs> television show. With I, fake commercials, and I just didn't shit. I just didn't feel comfortable putting a show or having this list without a show from FX slash FXX. Yeah, I mean, this is for people that don't know. This is also produced, written by Louis C.K. as well. Louis C.K. and Pamela Adlon have had a long time working relationship, even back in the days of Lucky, Lucky Louis. Louis. And um, you know, we talked a lot last year when Atlanta won the year. At least for me, I think for you too. Was it your show? Your, and I mean, we talked about how comedy, it was a great year for comedy. That wasn't my favorite year. People vs. OJ. Okay, sorry. And it's a great show. I, I can't, can't argue with that if I'm being honest with you. Neither can the critics. And uh, Better Things was just something that I think was a show that not enough people were watching. And I mean, this is something too. I mean, it's about a woman who's raising a family. Uh, on her own and trying to be a working single mother. And it's just, it's just an a, actress actress. Yeah. It's just a very, very likable show. Like mm-hmm. it, I think it's a likable show. It's relatable. Not for us, obviously, because we're men and uh, we don't have kids. We're not that age, but still enjoyable, still very smart. Um, I think it's something if you're looking for a comedy and uh, you're looking for something that's a little bit smarter, this is definitely something for you guys to check out. My number three is Mr. Robot. Uh, it's my number two, so we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, we talked about it last week. We did, so it's with a the trailer. Weird. But um, again, ro- briefly, I did say uh, that I was excited to re- binge the second season. We talked about it when we recapped it. I'm yeah. excited to binge this, see how different it is. It's on Amazon. Nothing has seemed more daunting to me than starting really? season two. For like a year, we've been talking about. Oh, when we binge it, though, when we binge it, I know, man, but. Listen, th- I'm going to. I don't. I'm. I'm going to as well. This is a. This is a show, that. Uh, so why is it daunting? So someone's someone's hearing you, okay. Two weeks in a row, say Mr. Robot is fantastic. It's our number three or number two of of the upcoming fall the, season. Why is the, watching season the two first, daunting? The first three to four episodes of season two establishes they establish an idea and they completely overstay the welcome on that idea they not only do they overstay it but they try to beat you over the head with it to the point while also while also uh expanding on new stories that just become way more interesting and after a while i mean i just found myself saying we get it like we get what you're trying to tell us right now let's move on from here so that's why it's sort of daunting to me i just don't want to be beat over the head with that again now with that being said 
at least what season three promises is everything what we sort of wanted season two to be. I like the trailer. Showcasing this world after crazy events and this and that. Um, and also just in general because I've, I feel like, especially with Game of Thrones being so popcorny, I think, to a certain extent. That's just, fair, Just yes. delivering it. Yes. I'm ready for a show that's a little bit more inside, no pun intended, uh, inside the mind a little bit. Um, and and not to mention, too, I mean, Did- I'm just a massive fan of, uh, of Sam Esmail. I'm also a massive fan of Baby Street. The other thing that I didn't care for in season two was that it was a little dragged out, but at the same time, it, I think it tried to replicate what was special about season one. Yeah, to a certain extent, I can, I can agree and, with that. And I'm not going to go into it. You're talking about, like, shots that aren't centered? No. Okay. I'm talking about <laughs> massive story points that yeah. made season one special. Right. They tried to replicate it again, and have, season two had its own version of that. And I didn't think it needed it, and I didn't think it was a special. And it just was like, okay, we're doing this now. I there's, think there's nothing on TV like this show. There's not, and we we always have this asterisk whenever we complain about Mr. Robot and we're down on Mr. Robot. We're still we still believe believe that we're talking about one of the best shows. Yeah, so that's why I still under number three. Um, I guess we don't really need to go into that much. We're going to be talking about it. We talked about it last week. We're going to be talking about it in the next couple of weeks. The, the other we'll, thing, we'll cover it on the show. The other thing that I will say about uh, two things that I think were lacking a little bit in season two, and I, I don't think this is a spoiler um, because people know who's in the show, but like, I feel like Christian Slater in general was just massively underutilized in yes. the last season. Yes. And also one of my favorite characters and, and probably one of the best characters in season one uh, just was not in the show. And I'll leave it at that. And that, and that bummed me out. Yeah. And there was really no, well, I'll just leave it at that. Sorry. Okay. Um, that was my number three. So now we're on my number two. Yeah. S- Stranger Things. Well, that's my number one. So just tell me what, what's your number one, and then we'll go back to Stranger Things. What's your number Stranger Things oh, is my wait. number one. Okay. Mr. Robot's my number two. Why don't we talk about Stranger Things, and then I'll talk about my number one. Okay. Because um, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> look, uh, well, I know what your number one is now. Um, Stranger Things is... But they don't. <laughs> an anomaly... Um, to me and just to go back on something that I've, I've said before when the show finally was drilled into my eyes N- everyone failed everyone fucking failed trying to explain the show to me why I should care about it wow why, why I even should watch me it. a little bit I thought I had the best sell you did a hundred percent you did but so okay the thing that's constantly referenced in the show is the nostalgia the 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 style you know it's it's et it's coming of age it's goonies it's super eight it's uh it, hell yes it's it's horror it's sci-fi supernatural it's uh yeah it's uh stephen king and all of these things and all of that sounded like borrows or as uh um uh, josh mccuga would say remember berries and all of those things exist in the show 100 percent. but at its very core There are so many other things that have that. All of that falls away. All of that erodes if the story is shit. Okay? And if if somebody would have came to me and said, this is a sci-fi horror type of show that has a bunch of kids, there's a, I mean, I guess, spoiler alert, there's a a inner interdimensional demon that comes through yeah. and a kid with superpowers that can fucking defeat it. That sounds dope. Right. All right. Sell me on that. I don't give a fuck when it's set. All the other stuff is cherries on top. The music is amazing. Yeah. The, every time that title card comes on, I get a huge graphic design boner and I love it. And it, I cannot wait for the second season. The fact that they have more money, the fact that they are, that Netflix is all in the fact that this is such a cross. The, next, the, the fact that it's nominated for awards. Yeah. And Even, whether it should be or shouldn't be. 
A hundred percent. I mean, it, it's what every, everyone, everyone was talking about. And so yes. It didn't of, just surprise us. Of course, I want to see this world get bigger. Yes. Of course, I want to go deeper into it. Yes. And if you are one of those people that is skeptical about them doing a second season because it should have been one season. Fuck you. Boo. No. Again, I'll just to reiterate this fact because people might have missed it. That is a conversation that was 100% fa- like the whole thing about it being an anthology show. 100% fabricated by people. Why do people think this was ever going to be a thing? Yeah. it Because you saw... True detective, you think every (laughs) new idea needs to be an original idea, needs to be an anthology series. No. It was great. Yes, of course we want season two. So anyway, my sell on the show, (laughs) for those of you who might not have ranting. Everyone just talked about the nostalgia. Yeah. And when I'm watching this, that's what brought me in, absolutely, because you know that... You know how I feel about this type of stuff. You like your coming of age. I also, I just like my sci-fi. Did you hear me say Super 8? I did. And I'm glad you acknowledged it because I love Super 8 very much. Um, you know, I'm into this thing, but when I'm watching the show, I'm I'm watching a show that has its own identity and has its own place. The idea of the upside down. Yes, you can label it as like an interdimensional, a second dimension. And when you label it like that, it's, it is so many other things. But it was how it was presented. The fact that the upside down and the whole string theory and the fact that it's this, this plane of existence that, you know. Yeah. I, that all of that's what makes it what it is. I'm rewatching Lost and, right now, and shit like that is exciting to me in that show. Yeah, and great. That's a great point. The way that Lost introduced the constant and what the variables were and the mathematics involved in all of that. I mean, absolutely, 100%. And people being lost on an island, not that interesting, but when you go deeper, it's pretty fucking crazy. Right. So, great point. So, and the other thing, too, is bringing a, a fictional monster to life. That's pretty cool with the Demi-Gorgon. Great. The Dungeons and Dragons thing. Okay. And hey, when you, do that on, that. when you do that on TV, you can get it really wrong. Yeah. And they got it pretty right. Right. And then having Eleven in there, and she just kind of took the world by storm. All of it was good. Yeah. It's just great. I like people with powers. Yeah. The gifted. It's got everything. <laughs> right. Eleven is the original gifted. Um. What else can we say other than the fact that it looks bigger and it looks better? And can I tell you what I I'm want? Freaking out! Can I tell you what I want in this show? I want more monsters. I yeah, want, I think I want I want more I want more action to th- quote unquote action. I want her to shake her hand at things more often. I want more blood to come what's, out of the nose. What's excellent, in my opinion, I think we're gonna have like the mist level of monsters. Um, I, I want th- an army of elevens. <laughs> How badass would that be? I think that the show didn't. It would have been very easy to get caught up in the hype and the popularity and maybe make it more popcorn. Yeah. And make it more about, for example, not to say that it could, a season could have been an anthology, but they could have shifted it in tone they and could've. made it all about, made it like a Ghostbusters tone. Like if they wanted to try to emulate other things, they could have, they could have moved forward in time. They could have made it a modern show. What they're doing looks very dark everything Extreme. going on with what the torment that will, will must be experiencing yeah. and the torment that winona rider continues to experience even though her, level of, her yeah. child in the first season her child was missing in the second season her child is still missing right but just in a different capacity like there's Emotionally. still there's still going to be so much darkness and so much torment that may be worse and yes yes and that's Something that I'm glad to see. I want see. to know what David Harbour has been up to. Like, what yes. is his link with everything? I, because Sean Astin now on the show. <laughs> right, right. Because that right there is what this show has to offer the television landscape more than anything else to me. To all you fuck that faces, it that will are hit. It. it will hit on every level. Are you listening, Josh McCuga? Like the people that were like, oh, well, I saw the Ghostbuster stuff. So we, it's clearly about n- nostalgia. What do you expect them to do? We, like, we just explained Stranger Things better than anyone. Oh, 100%. Well, it was great that they used the, they used the Dungeons and Dragons. Fuck off. I said that point. Oh, did you? I said it was great that they could, like, that's, that, that is interesting. 
to create a TV series and base it around a yeah. monster that exists in a game. That's pretty cool. Yeah, people just that, didn't. that'd be like if that'd be like if a TV show that was made today just based a plot line around Pikachu coming to life. I mean, that's what it would be like. I mean, look, I had every reason to just be like, you know what? I finally watched a show is nothing. See my yeah. see my example with Marvel Netflix, but <laughs> I it was great. And you, do you know how awesome it is that I just watched it? <laughs> That's what you didn't have to wait a year and a half like everybody more else. More people should. I mean, it wouldn't benefit the show, but more people should hold out on television shows. That wouldn't benefit us because then we wouldn't get our views optimized. That's what I just. That's what I just said. Oh, okay. it wouldn't benefit us. I'm tired. All right, let's talk well, about Larry David. And I was I was gonna ask you what's my number one. It's it's Curb. My God. So what I've been wanting to ask you all night. Yeah. I was about to ask you 20 times tonight. And then I was like, well, I got to save it for the show. Yeah. Will you watch this season of Curb? Will you experience it this way? Instead of going, on. instead of worrying about the, the daunting task of going, even though it's not that daunting because I feel like sitcoms are so easy to binge because they're so quick. How long are these episodes? 30. You know what this is perfect for? Come home. Maybe Kayla's home. Maybe she's not. Get a get a nice food. Eat your food while it's get on. a get a nice food. Get a nice food. What I will say, and I'm, I, I think that it can kind of be tough to go back and watch the show because I won't. You're not gonna walk, go back and watch. it. What if you nope. like it? Then I'll have more to watch later. Oh, so you're saying you'll go back and watch it if you like it? If I want more, yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about going back and watching to me, it before. To me, I ha- I have seen the rest of the show. Wait, first of all, there's no way in hell I'm going back and watching anything in a different aspect ratio. That's what I was talking about. Hell no. Are there previous seasons that have gone live I don't know. Screen? I don't know if they've updated it, but the ones that are live screen. Uh, live screen? <laughs> fuck. Um, <laughs> season seven and eight. Eight, I believe, are widescreen. And season okay. seven is the Seinfeld season, so that's a must-watch. And season eight is arguably the best season, in my opinion. Yeah. Obviously, that was the most recent season. You like that? So, one of the best ideas I've ever heard of in my life was Larry David living in a, a condo next to Michael J. Fox. Oh, yeah. And the Parkinson's jokes that they made on that show were so brilliant yeah michael j he asks michael j fox offers larry larry a soda when larry opens the soda it explodes in his face is that a smart joke i yeah because no i'm not done yet okay (laughs) that wasn't the end of it okay so larry looks at michael and wonders and the whole theme of the show is that they can't tell when michael j fox is shaking something on purpose because he despises larry right or if it's a parkinson's shake right because they're the whole underlying tone is that michael doesn't like larry right so anytime something happens well, because you- uh, because anything anytime something happens because of michael larry is that a real shake or or a parkinson's shake <laughs> <laughs> and anyway it's so great i didn't what- like when he called that dog a rat dog <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even get to the best part of that episode by the way but uh um, big fan of tim meadows <laughs> yeah, Tim Meadows is great. Uh, he was in that episode of the Goldbergs I was just talking about. So it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Anyway, Curb, Curb coming back means so much to me. I've been waiting for years because I didn't watch the show live. Right. Uh, I picked up the show. Well, that's not true. I picked up the first season like back in high school. And this is it, your the movie life. Uh, maybe. I've been waiting. <laughs> no, well, not exactly. Like I, I don't I'm fucking. With I was gonna say I'm a, I'm a hyper fan of Curb. I don't think you're a hyper fan of the movie life, yeah, but uh, pretty good. It had a good EP and a good album. Just every. I mean, this show speaks to me. The my history with Larry and Seinfeld. Their comedies, Bruce Lee. Is there? I mean, me. I, I feel like this is impossible. Even me, even somebody that doesn't even care about the show. Is there any possibility whatsoever? Like, how could a show like this just... How could a show like this be bad? It can't. If they made it something it wasn't. It can't. A, a and it Arrested won't. Development. It can and it season. won't. And it'll be like what we've talked about with Architects. Yeah. 
Larry's not going to change anything up. It's not going to be the way that Arrested Development Season right. 4 was. It, it, it is Curb. The difference is going to be that the, the best thing about Curb is literally just the stories that Larry comes up with. Right. It's the what, how creative. Whatever comes out of his mind. Yeah. How creative is this episode going to get? There's a great episode uh, with Palestinian chicken. And how he, as a Jew, he feels guilty going to this Palestinian chicken place and he can't let them know that he's a Jew. And then they found out he's a Jew and then they start to, it's, it's such a great, again, I don't do it justice, but there are so many really creative, uh, uh, scenes and storylines that they involve. And then, then on top of that, you get what you expect, which is, uh, Larry getting into argument with every single person he interacts with. Who's he going to piss off? And then how, because we know how Larry David opulate, operates as far as how Opulates. Seinfeld yeah. was formulated and how Arrested Development is even formulated, even though he's not involved with that. It's all the storylines come together at the end for right. something so absurd and preposterous. I've seen that's, that in Crash. That's how Larry David, that's how Larry David, op- ex- exactly like Crash. Uh, that's how Larry David operates. So it's it's the fun of how creative is this story and how are we going to get from point A to point B. And that's the brilliance of all of it and the fact that it's gut-busting hilarious. Comedies in general. It's uh, I mean, you touched on it, but I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's fascinating to me. Again, I'm not obviously as enthralled with the show as you are, but it's fascinating to me that in such a great time and a great age of television – we can have these comedies that we're talking about yeah. hold up against. So, and maybe that's just what we need. I mean, we're getting these shows with heavy subject matter that it's just nice to break through, but it is very important that they're smart. I think. Right. Um, people might be freaking out that this is my number one. If you don't know, I'm a super freak when it comes to Seinfeld and Larry David. They're going to be talking and about young Sheldon or whatever. That they're a uh, fuck. No. Their uh, their comedy has always spoken to me. I've always yeah. felt like I'm on the same wavelength as these people. They understand me, or I understand them. Whatever you want to say, and uh, it's just totally my speed. Yeah. So I'm just thrilled to death that it's coming back. People like it. Thrilled. I'm excited to to check it out while I'm eating a sandwich or something. Good. Yeah. And then you can watch Room 104 afterwards. I do need to watch Room 104. Checked out Mark Duplass. Oh, a watch. new episode came out tonight. There you go. You going to stay up a little bit later and watch it? No, I'm going to bed. Okay, I feel you. Ryan's tired. I'm starting to get a little bit sleepy. I uh, might have to go sit, sit sideways in my bathroom a little bit later. But anyways, guys, you can find us at Sight Sound Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Check out the Facebook group. Uh, Sight and Sound YouTube channel. Tons of content on our YouTube channel. Going to be hitting that very, very hard. All the music stuff that we're talking about, all the movie stuff, TV stuff, going to be having reviews and discussions on the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. That'd be fantastic. Uh, SightSoundPod.com, new merch dropping in October, but we do have three great, at least I think they're great, Game of Thrones inspired shirts coming out. Make sure to check out the Game of Thrones recap if you haven't. Um, a music show every single Friday. Ryan's got a new movie show dropping. Is that right? How you doing? Tuesday, we're going to be dropping the movie bucket list episode featuring Miss Movies, Brianne Chandler. And uh, yeah, and then the next episode that I'll do, I don't know if it's going to be that Thursday or the next week after, but I'm going to be talking about my life experience with Fight Club. There you go. You can find me at Jay Williams. You're the A to the Y to the E on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. Ryan, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at What Up Snell. You all right there, buddy? No, I need to go to bed. All right. Well, you get out of here. We're going to go eat some more Asian food. Never again before the podcast. I love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.